Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chet, episode 530, featuring a playthrough and review of the game Scald Against the Black Priory. Now, this is a game developed by, see the name of his company, North Studios AS. <laughs> I like to think I'm on a first name basis with Owl, who I've had on the show back in, uh, well, it was five years ago when we were talking about this game. It looked great then, but wow, what a magnificent project this thing has turned out to be. Fantastic fun. If you're a fan of the old Goldbox series, early Ultimas, uh, you're really going to love this. Uh, I will caution you uh, before you watch this video, there is some uh, foul language uh, in the text of the game. <laughs> not for me, but <laughs> uh, in the game. So if, if that's a concern, uh, you might not want to watch this or, or play uh, the game, but uh, other than that, you know, you're definitely going to want to see this and we'll have a lot of good things to uh, in store for you. Uh, so without further ado, here is Scald Against the Black Priory. Oh yeah! <laughs> Man, this is a game. All right, uh, we're going to have a great time with this Scald Against the Black Priory. You know, easily one of my favorite games uh, that I've seen, not just this year, but in a pretty long time. Uh, it's, I'm going to have a lot to say about it, but we'll get into that when we start the video. If you want to pick it up uh, before you watch, which uh, you might as well do, because uh, I'm just going to tell you how great it is. Uh, but you can buy it here at GOG for $13.50. I guess that's 10% off for a standard edition or it looks like for an extra uh what is that not quite ten dollars more you get the a map wow that'd be useful <laughs> that would have been useful <laughs> uh, so you might want to spring for that and my understanding is uh, the uh this the soundtrack uh the guy gets the the royalties when you buy the soundtrack version a different guy did the music which is which is amazing too uh, but anyway, that's thirteen forty nine over there on GOG, and then on here on Steam, it is also thirteen forty nine. So no real price difference. Uh, let's see, they got their deluxe bundle there for twenty one dollars. How much was it here? Twenty one dollars and thirty four cents. <laughs> so you save about uh, a dime or so, I guess, if you get it uh, the deluxe bundle from here. Uh, but anyway, go ahead and pick it up. If you haven't already, because at the very least, we're going to want to support Owl, who's making fantastic stuff. Now, about, uh, I will, uh, before I get into this, I need to make a, uh, a bit of a caveat, I guess, or a, what do you call it? Not a trigger warning. <laughs> Far be it for me uh, to issue something like that. Uh, I just want to say that there's quite a bit of foul language in this game. Uh, it's really R-rated in terms of just the dialogue, the text. Lots of f bombs and the c word <laughs> makes it as a, a frequent appearance. Uh, not a game, unfortunately, for kids because of that. Uh, I wish that it had a uh, some kind of slider or toggle so you could turn off the profanity. Because uh, otherwise, I think this would be great for younger people or just people that don't uh, like to see that kind of uh, language in a game. I don't think it really adds anything. Uh, but I'll just let you know. You know, if you're sensitive to that kind of thing. You probably don't want to play this game or even see the video because there's no real way I can uh, censor it out. So, <laughs> with that said, though, <laughs> uh, if you can overlook that, there's a heck of a lot to enjoy about this game. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, we will create a character, or actually, let's see, uh, choose a visual style. Uh, you know, he's doing a lot of updates on this. I don't, even since I finished the game a couple days ago, there might already be. Uh, some updates, some patches. Uh, looks like we could change the font. Okay, I don't really know what... <laughs> okay. <laughs> change the color. CRT filter, what's that? Oh god, no. <laughs> Disable that! <laughs> I guess he's trying to simulate the old school monitor. Just because he can! Alright, gonna continue. Start by picking a difficulty for your playthrough. Okay, it can be changed during play. Uh, now, when you give me options like this, I always go for normal. Yeah, because this, as it says here, this is the game's intended difficulty setting. I didn't find it too difficult on normal. 
know, there were a couple battles, of course. You had to reload, think about what you're doing. But uh, I think if you're familiar with this type of game, you'd be fine at normal. Uh, hard, what does that do? A challenge without feeling unfair. Dice rolls are slightly weighted in the opponent's favor, making them more deadly. And dice rolls are weighted? <laughs> They're playing with those funny dice. I don't think so. I'm going to switch on back to normal. Oh, I guess they get some re-rolls and stuff. Spells it all out here for you. Uh, ah. So I guess, can we customize this? Combat. I just want to see if you can customize that, uh, these difficulties. Narrative mode. I guess you're kind of stuck with this. Combat hills. Is there a way to enable it? it? Looks like I should be able to tweak these options, but I don't guess. I haven't messed around with this. Anyway, let's just... Normal's fine. Alright, class. Uh, classes define a character's role in the party. Now, we're going to be creating a, a, one character to start off with, and they'll be picking up some uh, some predefined characters with some stories and some quests uh, a little bit later on. And I suggest you play with those uh, pre-made people, because they add a lot of dialogue and things. But if you want to, uh, there are also... Uh, I believe they're called mercenaries at various points in the game, and you could just create your own custom party if you prefer to play it that way. Okay. So then we've got our... How many classes do we have? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. And I wanted to say he added something recently, but these will be fine. Lots of options here. I went with Officer on my first playthrough. I really like that. It's a warrior class, so you can tank uh, for the party. And then you also get some really cool party buffs. You know, it's a little tree where you can get some pretty cool stuff like letting all your people attack multiple times. Or move uh, further, I believe. Get some uh, bonuses. So that'd be a pretty good option. Now, I notice a lot of other people just go with Arms Master or Champion. You know, the Champion is a cleric who excels in the use of blades and armor while still having limited you know, divine spellcasting abilities. I'll just say, since I played the game, I can give you a little bit better advice here. Uh, the I don't believe you find... You do find a good ranger character later on that you might want. There's a thief character that's really good. You're probably going to want her. I don't believe you find a hospitaller, hospitaller <laughs> part of the hospitality industry. I don't recall seeing a hierophant. hierophant. Uh, you do find a mage... But it's very late in the game, so you might want to play a mage. I don't think we have we find a. You know, there is a cleric that we'll meet pretty early on, so you might not want to be thinking about a healing class on your first playthrough. So I'd say it's a good choice. Arms master be good. Battle mate Magos would be a good choice. Uh, let's just try a. You know, what do I want to pick? Okay, so one of the first characters you find is going to be a... I don't know if he's an arms master or champion. Let's just, just for the sake of variety, I'm going to go with champion. May use all types of weapons. May use all weapons of type blade and club. Okay, so we can be a sword-wielding cleric. And we're going to want presence as our main stat. You know, I'm tempted just to go back with Officer again because I liked it so much. Okay, we'll stick with this. Okay, what is... Uh, vitality per level. Okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. So these... You can see how some of these classes get more hit points every time they level up. Let's see what else do we need to know. Any armor? I think we'll go with this. It's kind of like a paladin. Paladin class, if you ask me. Just reading those descriptions. Alrighty, background for your character. Backgrounds add points and skills, influence, starting conditions, and narrative content. So you'll see a lot of this is familiar to you if you've ever played 5th edition D&D. Now there's going to be some differences. It's not a straight copy by any means. Uh, I think that the uh, differences, though, make it more suitable for a computer role-playing game rather than a tabletop game. Uh, we can get more into that. Uh, my first game... Oh, Street Rat. <laughs> How did I not notice this one the first time? Oh, my God. Street Rat. Well, we got to pick this. Well, <laughs> uh, I may have to 
resist my urge to go with this. I love that plus two initiative. Wow. Uh, the thievery is actually a really good skill in this game to have, but again, we're going to find a thief really early on who kicks ass. Uh, I say ass because, I mean, we're already going to put a disclaimer on this video for cursing. <laughs> uh, let's see, Noble. I went with Noble last time uh, because just as the leader of the party, you might be stuck with some of the dialogues. And there is a good reason to have the diplomacy and lore. Uh, but again, I like to switch things up. I just go with the same old, same old. You know, the 30 pounds carrying bonus isn't as uh, trivial as it sounds. It might actually be pretty useful. Uh, awareness and diplomacy. Uh, this is probably, I think, the best pick for my guy here. Ooh, well, this gives me false five attunement, which I, if I recall correctly. Yeah, how many spells can be cast? So if I really want to play up the cleric side of the class, I can pick that. Let's see if there's one that gives you presents. Look at that club damage bonus. All of this stuff would be good. I'm trying to remember how much they lean on this story-wise. Uh, it's a choice. I'm going to go with Courtier. Just because I love these two skills. and Awareness will help you find little treasures here and there. What's the description? Your time spent kissing noble arses. <laughs> you know, I believe that's pronounced asses, even though it looks like arse. Now, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, anyway, spent kissing noble arses has made you a master of navigating the cutthroat politics of the Imperial Lay Courts. Uh, diplomacy it gets you out of a lot of random encounters later in the game. Uh, but there's a lot of spots where it could be useful especially for the leader of the party and again awareness is always cool I, I always think that anything that gets you more initiative is probably your to me that's always the most important thing because if you can go first <laughs> that gives you I can often make all the difference in the world uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see though there might be some other chances to get some better initiative later now this is a you really want to spend some time thinking about these primary stats because you don't get to level these up. You know, all, when you level up, you'll get some vitality points, maybe some extra uh, spell points. I forget what they call it uh, in this game. Uh, attunement, I think, yeah. Uh, but we won't get a chance to add to these stats. Uh, there's a few spots very much later in the game, and there's some items, of course, that will do this for you. Uh, but you probably want to really be thinking about your main stats. That's it. The, this is my main attribute. So I'll probably put a couple points in that. And then again, as a cleric, I'm going to want some strength because I like to whack things with my mace. <laughs> oh. Uh, let's see what intellect does. Mental acuity, recall, and analytical skill. Read and react to the environment. So which one? I don't know if I need the intellect just to get hit points or... Uh, See, does it tell me here? No, so my attunement is coming from uh, presence. Okay, so maybe I don't really need intellect so much. Uh, fortitude. Let's see. That comes. Yeah, that's that's my hit points. So definitely want to point in that, at least. And let's see. Do I need agility? Well, there's my initiative. So I would be tempted to stick a point in that just to get that initiative bonus. And dodging is pretty cool. I mean, all of this stuff is nice. Uh, I don't want my character to be a thief or be stealthy. Uh, so those are two negatives, but all the rest are ranged. Uh, but all the rest of this would be good to have. But I'm going to go ahead and stick another point in. Uh, strength, I think. Just because I really want to be able to whack a rat. And there are rats in this game. Oh yeah. You think I'd be this excited about a game if it didn't have rats in it? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Alright, then we got our skills. And again, uh, you're going to find NPCs that will help, or actually they're not, they're player characters, free, free to find characters that have these. Uh, but diplomacy is a good one. Healing, of course. Uh, it's kind of a tough thing to heal your characters, uh, even with a cleric. Uh, they don't heal all that much. I think putting a point in that's a good idea. Uh, awareness, again, very useful because uh, you can find all those little hidden things. I don't know if we... I mean, there's also these camping sequences, and you can have your you know, your party members do various tasks around the campfire. And I know diplomacy is one of them. 
Yes. Well, I think we're going to find a survival survivalist. So let's just go ahead and keep... I'll tell you what. I'm going to see if I can just put a lot of points into... Well, it's not that much. Let's kind of do this. So plenty of heals, plenty of diplomacy. Actually, I might... Yeah, let's try that. Okay, six and six. We can look at our other, other stats here. So crit chance determined by agility. So I'm not going to be critting all that much. Uh, melee damage, though. I got a good solid whack. Melee to hit is determined by strength and agility. So it's pretty much what you would, what you would think. And then the toughness also uh, helps prevent disease and poison, which is there's a lot of stuff that will make you sick and poison. So that's a good thing. Uh, willpower, yeah, there's a lot of uh, fear type effects, so you probably don't want that to be zero. All right, and I think we need to just continue. Uh, and then we get these uh, feats. Uh, they call them feats. They're really skill trees, and this is a pretty interesting way that they've set this up here. Uh, so a lot of games, uh, let's look at this arms mastery, for example. So if I just put two points into that, uh, that second point doesn't do anything for me. And it's only if I hit a full three ranks that I get this perk. So I bring that up because sometimes you might want to sort of scaffold these a little bit. So you put like one point here, one point there. Just so you get the immediate pop, uh, the immediate advantage of something. Uh, or, you know, you might just go for a, like a level where you don't really get anything new, but you're a little closer to something really awesome. And so it's, it really makes leveling interesting. It's, it's a little different than other games I've played. And you also need to have uh, at least one point in something to get to unlock the next uh, uh, branch there, even though this one's... Uh, let's see, what does it do? Uh, targets the character themselves. Themselves. Okay. <laughs> let's see if I can get that to pull up. And most of these will last until end of combat, which is nice. So this will give me a willpower boost. Oops. Come back. Willpower describes the character's ability to withstand mind effective conditions. So if you know you're getting into a fight with a lot of stuff that might uh, mentally mess with you, you could put a point in that. But I, I don't really like it all that much, but it, I have to have it to unlock these other things. Let's see what else we have here. Melee accuracy. Now, see, here's a good example of what I'm talking about. So to get to precise strike, precise strike, which gives me a uh, special attack or maneuver, uh, gives me plus four accuracy on that. You know, it sounds pretty cool, but I'm going to have to put a lot of points into this, and I'm going to have to go all the way through ranged accuracy, which I don't want. I'm not going to be using a bow with my cleric, so that would be three useless points uh, before I get, actually, <laughs> you know, uh, lots of uh, wasted points there to get to precise strike, which is, isn't all that great for me anyway. Uh, then I need to decide, do I want a sword and shield character or somebody with a two-handed weapon? So I'm going to go with, of course, the shield, because I'm thinking of this guy kind of as a tank. And accuracy, again, just what you would think. Shield use, I can unlock something called phalanx, which is kind of cool, because uh, a lot of times your characters are tightly clustered anyway, and if they're right next to somebody, uh, they get this free dodge bonus. And if they have it too, they'll get a bonus. Uh, so that's a really cool thing to have. Uh, shield Rush, I believe. Yeah, I never used this on my other game. Uh, but it, I guess you could push somebody away from you. Uh, which could be useful. Maybe you got a thief that you want to do some backstabbing with. Uh, you could get strategic with the Shield Rush. Okay, so I got three more points. Okay. Let's see probably want some spell casting <laughs> so that'll activate spell casting and then you've got body mind and spirit just like good old might and magic yeah <laughs> not a whole lot of spells there's a decent number uh, and you will find books uh, with spells in them they're kind of rare you get a whole bunch at the end uh, so it's kind of up to you if you want to um, you know, how many points? I think we've got it activated, right? No, I think we need to... Okay, so we can already cast Tier 1 spells, and then if we put... Let's see, I think we have to have at least one point in it to unlock this next... Actually... Well, maybe this is level locked or something. 
It looks like... Yeah, so we can't get to, to the level 2 spells right away. Uh, so we could do this and unlock all these. Actually, I'm yeah, trying to see the little marker. So I don't quite have enough to go all of them. And Spirit has some pretty cool stuff. Okay, Resilience gives me increased vitality. Faithful gives me increased healing and attunement. These are all three extremely useful. Uh, this one will keep me alive. <laughs> oh, choices! Choices! Okay, why don't we... Oh boy, this is hard. I guess I'll go with Resilience just because I like... I kind of like being alive. I find to do more damage when I'm alive. Okay, then we get the old good old Pool of Radiance gold box character customization. We can change up our portraits. Portraits. Yeah, get a pretty good number. I think if you get there, in their patch or something, you can get that'll give us a couple more. Yeah, this is the part that reminds me so much of the gold box games. Yeah, this is very similar to that. I'm going to spend more, you know, I guess an equal amount of time looking at both of these. So you might want to put a little thought into it. And we're just going to continue on. Uh, my other character's named Matt already, so we're going to call this character. Um, I guess you could call him Bart. <laughs> All right. We'll start the timer now, see how long it takes us to get to our first rat battle. Uh, no voice acting in the game, which doesn't bother me at all. The text is good. There's not a ton of it. I love that. I don't want to sit here reading a damn book. <laughs> Just keep it, keep it, uh, keep it minimal, but it's well written, except arguably for some of the language. But anyway, on the wine dark, there's a nice uh, Homer. Line on the wide dark raging seas of the owl. You know, is owl well read? I, I think he's a well read individual. Anyway, on the wine dark raging seas of the outer isles, a lone caravel struggles against the winds and waves towards the accursed island of Idra. And you see these little blue pieces? I can click on those to get a little bit of background on it. And learn about the lore of the game. You know, I love the interface, the design, the aesthetics on this. It's just really works for me. <laughs> you know, I think it's a little better than the, at least that Commodore 64 uh, Pool of Radiance graphics, but it's, it's enough of a nostalgia. You know, one of the things I notice about some of these sort of sprite-based games is it can be, sometimes they can be so retro that you can't even really make out what things are, too blocky. Uh, this is perfect here. Just retro enough. Let's see, the moan of creaking timbers. The tang of preserved fish. Not that kind of tang. Anybody drink tang out there? Uh, your eyes slowly adjust to the darkness of the ship's dimly lit hull. You see, it's just enough of a teaser. It's like a good DM that knows not to just talk all day. And they give you a little bit of stuff to kind of trigger the old synapses in the brain. You can picture it, you get into it, but it doesn't start to bore you. Uh, suddenly, something strikes the hull and the ship rocks violently. I think he showed that ship rocking violently. Your heart begins to pound and a feeling of unease grows in your stomach. I'm not sure what this choice does. Rouse yourself from deep meditation, get up, mouth dry, and head pounding. I don't know, does this give me some kind of bonus? Let's just try the last one. You get to your feet and become aware of agitated voices shouting up on deck. Something is not right. You should make your way up top and get a bearing on the situation. Was it a Divinity Original Sin? One or two, one of those kind of starts like this. What is shift flashing for? Oh yeah. <laughs> As if I hold down the shift key, you get a very easy to see uh, highlights around the stuff you can interact with. Now sometimes that won't work uh, because you're not aware of something. So it's another reason you pump up the awareness and then you'll be able to see some of the hidden items around you. Sometimes you see a barrel or a chest somewhere, but it won't let you do anything. 
until you make your awareness roll. A desk with a maritime navigation map. The map is labeled the Outer Isles and of course is drawn towards an island named Idra. Now wouldn't it be nice to be able to pick up that map? Because <laughs> there's no auto map! Oh no! <laughs> uh, I did find one map in the game, but for the most part you're just going to have to uh, have some kind of sense of direction. It's not going to be a problem in a, uh, a boat or the ship here. Now, there are some dungeons where it's very easy to get turned around mixed up. That's just part of the challenge. You can break out the graph paper if you like. I didn't find it that challenging. But for some people, that's part of the fun. Some people criticize him for not having an auto map. I mean, come on. Uh, mousing over an interactable object will make you all out loud. Here he is. It's just... Okay. So there's a chest over there. Ah. And we can click on our inventory. We'll tell you if you uh, once you have an item equipped, just double click on it. Uh, if you find another weapon, you can look at it and it'll say over here. Well, this does uh, accuracy will be unchanged, and I'll do less damage with that. But you do better crit damage. Uh, this guy's not really a critter. <laughs> That's a word. Uh, so I'm less concerned about that. But again, if it was a thief, it'd be a much different scenario. I think we can look at our spells too. Oh, I guess I don't have any spells right now. That will find some. Locked. To your surprise, you realize that this door has been locked from the outside. It doesn't budge. Perhaps you could slip the lock with a thin blade or use something to smash it. Using the club, you smash the lock in a foul swoop. Ooh, we got 100 XP just for that. <laughs> this door swings open. You can now clearly make out cries from the deck above. You should make haste. Yeah, see, he says, I spotted something. That's the, uh, now I realize I'm kind of covering up part of the screen here. Uh, you can see the time, day, and next position, Y position, and whether it's overcast or raining or whatever. Uh, but anyway, that awareness bonus is already proving its use, right? Because I was able to spot this. Look at all these items. I guess as a cleric, I can't use the short bill. So it's a good thing I didn't pump a lot of points into that. I'm gonna steal a helmet. Get me some leather. Hellbent, hellbent for leather. Ooh, I can swap my club for a sword. It is a short sword. I should probably do that. As much as I like whacking, uh, uh, whacking stuff. Stop dead as the as you narrowly avoid stepping in a rust red puddle. Don't you love the music? So perfect. The stench of blood fills your nostrils, and as you look around in the dim light of the hold, you realize someone or something fought for their life here. The same moment the thought hits you, a hiss sounds from the shadows. <laughs> what could it be? Could it be? Is it Christmas? Is it my birthday? You squint. Oh, it is! You squint towards the shadows as a hunched, feral-looking form slowly slinks forwards. Oh, this slinking thing doesn't have any idea who it's messing with! Tiny, disgustingly human-like hands, yellow fangs, and a grotesquely dexterous pink tail leaves no doubt of the creature's rodent nature. No, it does not! Though is it em How perfect is this? Though as it emerges from the shadows, it becomes abundantly clear that what may have started life as a common ship rat has grown into something that has no right to exist! A second hiss sounds behind you. The abomination is legit. Bring it! Okay, I don't need this. Skip, skip! Alright. <laughs> get to the... <laughs> okay, I'm getting a little... I gotta I'm getting a little carried away. Alright, calm it down. I'm sorry. I'm just this is my thing. <laughs> uh, all right, just deploy your party. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about order, party order, or anything like that, because you always get to put your men wherever you want to. And I think if we hold down the shift key, yeah, you can see the little spots where you can move versus things that are blocked. Very useful. Sometimes it's not clear to you just by looking at the screen, like you couldn't move there, for example. And I believe a light 
might actually play a role. I didn't confirm that, but I think you might miss more if it's in the dark. Just speculation would make sense. All right, begin the combat. Oh, look, he hit me with, with the disease. <laughs> I think I can click on myself. Yeah, see what he hit me with. Weakly diseased. So I lost an agility point. So I guess that means I'll be dodging even less than I would normally. Now down here, uh, I don't have any spells yet, so that's not an issue. I could turn on this Imperial Litany, uh, which I don't think I'll need that for this. Uh, there is a guarding or defending uh, action you can take to end your turn. We can look in the inventory, we can hold the action. So a lot of this stuff is different than uh, 5e, of course. Uh, and then over here, you can see these yellow ones are my movement, and then the red is my action. So I don't really feel the need to move anywhere. I just feel the need to strike. So I can either hit or click on him. I kind of like the, the tactile nature of clicking on it. <laughs> Six blunt damage, injured the head. However, he's already got me down about halfway. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing if I lost this first battle? Uh, it says he's defenseless. So I think he's defenseless because I, yeah, he's panicking as he should, you rat attacking Matt Barton. What the hell were you thinking? So I think if I had a, somebody with backstab, like my rogue, they could take advantage of that situation and do incredible amounts of damage. Okay, we got one more rat to dispatch. Yeah. Actually, am I wielding my... No, I didn't activate my sword, so I am using the club. Okay. <laughs> I meant to activate the sword, but somehow this is even more fitting. Victory! 90 XP. <laughs> I love this too. Uh, so you get a, a lot of times you get little body parts off the monsters, and there's a pretty decent uh, alchemy system. I'm not sure I figured all the recipes out. I was only able to ever make like lesser potions, so I don't know if there's something I'm missing, maybe some secret. Or maybe the idea is you can make the basic stuff, but you have to buy the better stuff. I don't know. But anyway, this will be useful. Uh, the crafting score course good for that you can make sometimes two potions instead of one potion once you get that up yeah I thought I had uh, equipped this stuff I guess not that was silly but it's okay I'm kind of dinged up here I don't think there's anywhere to rest yet let's just continue on we'll get some potatoes yeah you do eat in this game when you camp Conditions. You have contracted a disease from your fight with rats. You may see why conditions are affecting you, but uh, not all conditions are negative. Uh, I think I know everything, but... He wants me to take my potion, I believe. Wait. Didn't I pick up some potions? Man, I just... Really missing some stuff here. Okay, moderate attunement. I miss a potion somewhere. Let's see. Well, maybe I'll pick it up in here. Let's see. And there's the lantern. Ah, oh, there we go. Potion of Cure Disease. Okay, so I can just pop that open. Find it there. Consume it! I'll go ahead and consume a healing potion too. That door just goes there. Now I did pick up a lantern as well. And I can. There's a spot to equip that, and then I can hit T, turn that on and off. So again, I'm not really concerned about being stealthy, but I would assume it's better not to have a lantern if you want to be stealthy. All right, Roland, you emerge onto the ship's lower deck as your eyes adjust to the darkness. The darkness of a hulking figure standing in the shadows. But you're at last! Growls a rough voice. <laughs> Is that rough enough for you? But Who's there? Show yourself. Lunge at the figure. Come on. I 
guess I could do this. I kind of knew who it was because he put Roland across the top, but oh well. It's Roland! Where are the tides have you been? Yeah, see, so you could put a word like, where the tides have you been? I don't always have to put the F-bomb. Uh, why are you skulking around? Below decks planning our land deploy. <laughs> see what I mean, though? <laughs> Should be... Okay, well, I warned you. It's going to get a lot worse than that. Below decks planning our land deploy. So I believe this guy is the uh, mercenary. So he's going to be a little creative with the narrative here. It kind of puts us in an exciting moment to start with, and then we'll get some backstory a little bit later to establish some of this stuff. Like, we don't know who this girl is at this point. Uh, we're going to find that out pretty soon. You know, a lot of problems with games like this is they put all these characters in there and all this backstory and dialogue before you have a chance to even get to know the characters. There's no reason to care about the, or care about the whatever problems they're having. Uh, but uh, this game does a good job of just sort of feeding it to you gradually. So by the time you get to that, you will care. Let's go for all the good it will do. There's a few sailors up ahead, rattled as a pair of rabbits. So we can either try to sneak past them or just fight them. I think we're probably better off trying to stay friendly with them. Rescue. Yeah, so the party leader, uh, you might want to select, uh, maybe if you're in a place with a lot of hidden stuff, you might select the character with the highest awareness. If you're being sneaky, you want your thief to be the leader. Or if you're going to be talking to people, obviously the character with the most diplomacy. Now, we can't mess with anybody's uh, primary stats, but we can select their feats. All right, bread for war. Increased athletics, toughness. Uh, you do want at least one character with high scores on each thing, but athletics is really useful. Second wind is basically a free healing potion. Takes off bleeding, gives you three to six plus magical aptitude. Uh, vitality, so that's a good thing to have. But of course, we're probably going to want arms mastery. I guess we could make Roland kind of a... Let's look at his attributes again. Oops. Uh, so he's got two points of agility, so let's say he could be a decent archer. You know, sometimes you get kind of cramped up and you can't always get into melee range. So it might be useful to have a, a little bit of archery. Yeah, the arrow system is kind of interesting. So they, you can have multiple characters using the same pool of arrows. So just be aware of that. You can run out faster than you might think. It's not that each character is going to have five arrows. All right, let's see. He's got a two-handed sword. All right. So if we can do the two-handed initiate, it gets heavy weapon accuracy. And that is a heavy weapon there, that two-handed thing, yes. Put a point into that. We could skip the shield. Now I guess if you put in sword... Let me get another look at this. I haven't used a two-handed... Yeah, so blade. So I believe that two-handed or sword initiate would be good for him to have. But probably don't want to waste points in archery yet or shield so let's do a little bit of both let's again just put one point in so we get this first little tier increases athletics and we can increase uh, <coughs> various things too the not today is a really good one uh, so as, once we get into the thick of things you notice you, you sort of your vitality or this green bar goes away pretty fast and that's not that big of a deal, but once the purple bar starts taking uh, damage, you get all sorts of wounds, and then you have to rest. Uh, so that one's actually pretty uh, good thing to have. I found it very useful that not today. Uh, charging is a pretty good one too. Uh, let's see how they describe it here. If your character is charging, 
moving at least two tiles in a straight line before performing an attack. Now, so if you plan it out correctly, you might have three or four uh, tiles that you run, and then you do a lot of extra damage on that. So that's a really useful thing to have. And it also leads to vicious and the all-important multi-attack. So the quicker you can get to this multi-attack, the better, I think, because it's a whole extra attack. <laughs> uh, I think we're going to need... Yeah, going to have to be level 5 before you can start getting that, but this is going to be a game changer once you get to multi-attack. What else looks interesting? I guess we've got six more points to play with. I'm not going to waste any points on those. Yeah, if we could get to blade damage. Plus one sword damage bonus. Plus one heavy damage bonus. Okay, all this stuff would be good. I think I might put a point in there to get that increased toughness. Yeah, I don't. This is the one part of this I hate is that you have to put points in like light armor to get a medium armor to open, and then all the way to heavy armor. Unless you really want somebody very light on their feet, you probably don't want to put full five points in light armor. <clears throat> you know, I'm just gonna maybe go for that third rank of charger. Your charges cause one to three additional blunt damage. Yeah. Uh, do I want to do that? No, I think I'm gonna change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Get that increased vitality. Well, I still got a couple more points. Why don't we... Uh... Hmm, that's a tough call there, isn't it? Yeah, I could get another toughness bonus here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. This guy's gonna be tough. <laughs> oh, I still got one more point, okay. I don't want to. I don't really want to put a point in light armor mastery, but you do have to have at least one point to unlock the better stuff later. So I don't see anything else that's going to give me a instant pop on anything. I don't have enough points for that. Yeah, go ahead and put a point in that, I guess. Even though I don't want to specialize in it. You do need to have at least one point. Yeah, you got some Perklin. This humble Perklin makes up. I've never heard of Perklin. It's often preserved with salt. You see, it says uh, used and salted fish. If I can get that to pop up. Uh, but, oh, I guess we can cook here. I can show you the cooking. What's that thing? Grindstone. Hmm. Can I do anything with a grindstone? Alright, crafting! Uh, skip this. Now, what you probably want to do first is see who's got some crafting skills. Uh, this guy's got a 1. This guy's got a 1, so they're both kind of stinky <laughs> when it comes to crafting. But I don't think. We've got anything to craft with yet. Yeah, that's not a valid recipe. Now, if you look at where it says used in, you can get an idea of the ingredients you need to make things. And you typically need at least three ingredients. Salted fish. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and think I probably need to have salt to make that. All right. Stealth. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we can turn the stealth on by hitting uh, this button or three, and it'll tell me each move. What was that thing? Oh, there's a recipe there. <sighs> Salt, potatoes, and a perklin. Take it or get a dagger in the eye, you cheap bastard. Make sure. Oh, crap. Kind of let my stealth build back up. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be tricky. Do I have my? I don't have that land or lantern on, do I? Make sure that's off. Okay. Well, this is going to be tricky. I think I'm going to make it like that. Let's back to zero. I think I just want to make a straight shot past these guys. 
No, nope, didn't make it. Dead Emperors is coming for us. It whispers to me. Yeah. It's like they're hearing voices. One of them draws a weapon with shaking hands. A weapon. Now we could try to use our diplomacy. Which my diplomacy is supposed to be pretty good. Let's see what happens. Uh, so then we get these skill tests. Again, very 5th uh, edition style. You can see I get a 6. For the difficulty, 6 plus 2d6. Or that's my... Uh, I guess I get a bonus 6 for my skill level and then plus 2d6. And I have to beat a 10. So all I need to roll is a 4 or above. Which hopefully, unless I get really unlucky, I should make that. Or I could switch to, uh, to Roland. And you see he's, doesn't, he's not as diplomatic as good old uh, Bart is. Let's try this. <clears throat> you bring glory upon thine ancestors. You know, I don't think I ever rolled uh, two sixes. I don't know if it does anything special. I guess he wanted to buck that trend of the D20. Good old fashioned dice. Now, the men stopped dead in their tracks, seemingly shocked back from their momentary lapse of sanity by your words. Bear blinks towards you on a moment of indecision, and the stumbles up, and then, I think there's a missing in, and then stumbles up to the main deck, and the tumult seems to be taking place there. You know, I saw somebody was complaining about the typos and misspellings. I didn't really notice many. I just happened to notice that one. Uh, but for the most part, I didn't. Definitely didn't notice a lot. This is coming from an English professor. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, I want to go back here and make some... We have all the ingredients now to make our salted fish. So click that, craft a couple, and then we got some food. When we get to a place where we can camp, I'll need that food. All right, is there anything up here? Oh, there's a place I could rest. Okay, I don't have anybody with lock picking. So we'll probably just want to try to bash it open. Yeah. I don't know if there's any downside to uh, just bashing things open as opposed to picking it. I guess it's probably quieter. Well, sometimes uh, in games like this it'll damage some of the stuff or you get less treasure. Okay, a shield that I want to put on my main guy here. Ooh, I could trade that regular old short sword for a master work short sword. So, I'm not really too banged up. I could just keep going here, but that's, uh, I could rest. And we got another door to bash open. But, does it do a little damage to me when I bash? Is that what the, the trade-off is? I'll have to check that next time. There. All right, you recognize the corpse of one of the crewmates, a young man of barely 16 years called Sullum. The youth has been mauled to death by what you assume are the grotesquely altered rats you encountered just minutes ago. The corpse is still warm. Yeah. I got the apothecary's desk, pick up some potions. And I think most of these potions, the way they work, you just take them in combat because they only last... Let's see. You know, they only last until the end of combat. So another good reason to have a high initiative, you can take that potion right off the bat before the enemies get to you. I picked up a journal there. Left Hadler's hand. So I won't read all this to you. You can experience it on your own, but I just sort of, again, want to compliment them. You know, lesser game, they'd be like, 17 pages to read. <laughs> Most of just cringe-worthy prose. Now he avoids that mistake. Keeps it short and sweet. Alright. Well, why don't we go ahead and rest just so we can see what it looks like. Wait. Okay, that's different. You know, usually when you find a bed, you can rest in it, but I guess you can't. They don't want you doing that. This, uh, 
opening of the game. Right, so we need to go up. <clears throat> you emerge onto the deck and see two groups of men facing each other with weapons drawn. The ship shakes violently in the grip of the storm as lightning tears across the sky. Don't you love these, this artwork? It's just so good. Amidst the din of the storm and their frantic arguments, you bellow for the attention of the assembled crewmen and mercenaries. Both the ship's captain and the leader of the mercenaries you hired, a coarse thug of a man named Gustavo, turn their attention to you. They look ready to use the unsheathed weapons in their hands at the slightest provocation. Let's see if we can talk to the captain or the mercenary leader. Direct your attention to the captain. You know him to be a reasonable but suggestible man. At present, his usually placid eyes are wild with panic or anger. I paid you passage to the shore, did I not? <laughs> the ghost of Idra is cursed! We had heard tales and assumed the them grog drenched rumors only. There is something between us and the shore that will drag us all to the bottom of the grave. I've been really getting into the old uh, classic Conan comic books. <laughs> And then this really kind of reminds me of that universe. And although it's supposed, I guess it's probably more H.P. Lovecraft than Robert E. Howard. Although, a lot of people don't realize this. Now, Robert E. Howard, creator of Conan, also wrote a lot of stories set in H.P. Lovecraft's universe. I just wrote a collection of those, really fun too. But anyway, I digress. Now, we must sell on to land and the girl. Okay, don't worry if you don't know who this girl is. We're going to find that out later. We are seasoned sailors. We do not balk at shadows. You need to be alive to rescue this girl you speak of. So basically, you know, how strong do you want to play your hand here? Do you want to strong arm this captain or let him fight it out? <laughs> you probably don't want to turn around. That's probably game over for you, Dad. So. Let's try that. Gustavo, convince the man. Gustavo turns a steely gaze from you to the captain. Let me spell this out for you, Sea Dog. We contracted to rescue the girl. The girl. But if you don't get us to the shore, we'll get you for free. <laughs> I kind of like Gustavo. <laughs> Captain, he's right. Do what you were hired to do. Something changes in the captain's expression. He stands tall. I would not order my ship and my men to certain doom. We shall not get any closer to the coast while I have command. Okay, so again, I'm going to try the diplomatic option, because that's what my guy is good at. Uh, it can beat a four, I hope. And we did. So we took the rhetorical route. He sheathes his blade, so be it. May the deep have mercy. And we got some XP. You know, I'm not sure if we would have gotten more XP if we fight than if we do the uh, other options. I hope it should be the same, I think. Anyway, let's continue on. Uh, suddenly, huge, monstrous tentacles burst from the water around the ship. For a split second, before the terror sets in, you wonder what Estavo must be thinking as the monstrosities loom over him. <laughs> I'm thinking, this is the worst anime I've ever seen. Uh, after reaching their full height, the tentacles curve inwards and smash to the ship. Some peer straight through the deck. Others snap the mask like they were matched to us. Let's see if I can do this. The last time, uh, I want Roland to be in my party, but I wasn't able to save him. We'll see if we can do it this time. Try to grab him. You lunge for him, but he loses his grip and your fingers close. So maybe that's just preordained that we can't rescue him. I wasn't sure if there may be an athletics roll or something. Maybe for story purposes, it is not optional. Alright, abandon the ship. Coming back to the water winds you, the waves fall you down, the currents beseech you to go deeper. And a deep. Peaceful blackness. Sink. Nice artwork there. Two weeks earlier. So you see, they're getting all kind of advanced with storytelling techniques. Uh, so I guess what you could call this is a, what do they call this? A, uh, 
Not foreshadowing. <laughs> the opposite of that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you sort of go back and tell some of the earlier story to set up the context. But, I, I, you know, a lesser game would have given you this first. And you're like, why should I care about this? I just want to fight some rats. So I think uh, it's called quite wisely gives put you in the action first gives you a hint gives you a taste of what the game's going to be like and then sort of takes you out of that to give you some of the backstory all right arms master lira awaits you at the main entrance so you can explore all this if you like i don't think there's a whole lot to do uh, some little side quests we can do here uh, you can certainly get to know what the uh, who the girl is and why you should trying to rescue her. You get to make some pretty interesting decisions about your motives for that. <laughs> Walk on by. <laughs> Return his stare. So, young Celso, come looking for a scrap, have you? Kitty and you old fool. Yeah, he's, he doesn't hate us. Teasing us a little bit. Gideon steps back and allows you to breathe again. We heard of your father's passing. Truly, he sits with a golden dead now. Tell me, how did he die? And so here's kind of where you get to establish some of your backstory, the way you see your character. I think it's nice. So first time I said in Glorious Battle, let's try one of these other options this time. Uh, drunk and reeking of his own piss. The man's eyelids droop. It was a cruel fate that befell your father, and yours, crueler still. For what it's worth, I'll bear memory of him as the good, honest man he was before. We'll raise a cup to his name. <laughs> yeah, my dad died from alcoholism, but yes, we'll raise a cup to his name later. All right, Master Cato will tell you. Nero will escort you. I shall. Oh, we get some uh, diplomacy roll here. Let's see what happens. Gotta beat a nine. This might be a pretty tough roll. Might not make this. Yep, fail. I won't betray my master's confidence by saying more. If you want to explore, for old time's sake, take this lantern. Or bear him wait. We don't want you getting lost in the hedge maze again. Okay. Tough character. Can't hardly sleep on account of the aches. Let me tell you, I'd take an arrow in the leg any day. What? But damn, these are acting up again. Can't hardly sleep on account of the aches. Let me tell you, I'll take an arrow in the leg any day. And then, I think I'd rather have a little bit of knee pain. <laughs> a few aches and pains. And if you're going over to the kitchen later for a bit of grub, a bottle of brandy from the wine cellar would make me a happy man. So there's a little side quest. So we can check our journal to see the... Uh, a little bit of the story if we forget what's happening. You know, I never really looked at this faction thing, but I guess that does something. <laughs> uh, Gideon uh, asked me to f asked me fetch a bottle of brandy from the wine store. Okay. Now, I believe up here... Oh, there's some doggy. Got the dog. Oof. All right, and here we have Lyra, or maybe it's Lyra. Her posture speaks of a graceful, coiled power, that of a dueling ace. She's a new master at arms for House Baron. Greetings, Bart. Master Cato welcomes you back. Uh, so we could go straight on to see uh, Cato, or we could check out a maze. Yeah, let's just go straight on, because again. You're going to be playing this game yourself. You can see the, this backstory material. Uh, yes, I remember the way. I will escort you nonetheless. So if we do the whole thing, uh, you might be able to get a couple items or something. I don't quite recall, but it's really not going to matter. Because this, again, is the prologue. The opulence is faded. The shadow is longer. I didn't come here to reminisce. <laughs> yeah, there's some kind of bad blood between you and the Master Cato. 
flanking the doorway are two marble statues. I don't want to spoil too much of it just in case. So. Hopefully you play this yourself. But let's see, can I get in that room? There might be some scrolls. I would love some spells. Oh, look at this. No, I don't remember this last time. I guess this wasn't useful to me because I wasn't a, a mage. I, won't, I probably won't be able to keep any of this. Oops. Hopefully there'll be at least one spell or two. Let's see. Okay. Let's check our inventory. Unfortunately, I think these are all wizards. <laughs> well, there's a couple here. Yeah, but I don't have the right schools of magic. Oh, that stinks. So unfortunately, I won't spells for a while. Even though I could learn them if I just had... It's almost worth reloading just to get a point in that. That's the master's office. They want me to be quiet. Not good at that. I try. I'll sneak past these. Oh, somebody's coming. Oh, that <laughs> yeah, some of the stuff would be only good for a mage. Yeah, let's see if we can find that guy his bottle of brandy. Oh, I can't exit. Oh, never mind. I guess I can't do that quest. <laughs> Failure! I was just thinking, if I could level up, I might be able to get a point in the uh, mind magic and learn some of those spells while I have them on my inventory, but oh well. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Handsome fellow. You take, a sight, uh, you take a seat across a formidable desk from him. The study, like the rest of the villa, is half-lit, hidden in gross cast to its opulence. It's just a shame our reunion is overshadowed by the fates of those we love. Why have you summoned me? Embla is missing. What's happened to her? Basically, her his uh, childhood friend, and she's got a lot of connections to the plot. But she's gone missing where she was going. <laughs> yes. One hydra, an aptitude. What am I to do? Hire mercenaries. Travel to Idra and begin your search in the port of Horan. Now let's go do some Horn and Horn. Uh, from there, I trust you to do what needs to be done. Okay, and then there's a little backstory about why we have Roland in the party. Grizzled veteran, consideration. Uh, and then we can dec decide what our motive's going to be. Are we just in it for the money? Is it about our family's name? Is it for Imla? <laughs> or we could just be a jackass. <laughs> now, let's do the family's name. I did the Imla option the first time. You know, and if you do all the side quests here, you really, uh, there's a light in there that shows uh, why you care about Imla. Turn her to me. You have my word. Remain silent and leave. Remain silent. Let's keep it frosty. Alright, now we're into the game proper, chapter one. It's like I'm beat up a little bit. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, when you level up, you get some vitality. You saw the different classes, they'll get a different amount. Uh, now. But I don't have those books I collected, unfortunately. But we could. Now, I guess you could just wait until to see if you pick up any books. Let's go ahead and put a point in each of these just so I can have at least uh, tier one. And I got one point left. And I want to put it there. It's lots of cool stuff. Also, when you heat, uh, level up, it gets rid of your. Conditions, which is nice. 
Let's see if my shift does it. I guess it doesn't work. Now, I think there is a setting. Let me check. Classic consoles, filter, window. Now, I thought there was an option that would show you the uh, those little dots everywhere, but maybe I just made that up. <laughs> it's under gameplay. Tactical icons always on. Tactical grid enabled. Let's see if that, that does. It did nothing! Did it actually turn it on? Tactical symbols on a grid during combat. Okay, I guess I just disabled that. <clears throat> all the rest of this alone. It would be nice to have those little dots because you know sometimes it's not obvious where you can uh, where you can go. I guess you could always click with the mouse to get a path. All right slowly you drag yourself from the cold water onto the relative safe car. You try and fail to stagger forward. This exhaustion washes you over the great black wave. Oblivion takes you before you hit the rocky Woken by the cacophonous cries of gulls circling you. Your body is a mass of pain and exhaustion, covered in a thousand cuts and scrapes. Large white birds gather around you in eager anticipation. What a magnificent feast your bloated corpse would make. Not today! Minutes or perhaps hours pass as you lay unmoving, trying desperately to will some warmth back into your it's a miracle you're not only alive, but you're on the shores of the cursed island of Itra. Strewn about you is the wreckage of the Zephyr. You see no other survivors. Alright, okay. we've already taken care of that. Alright, so we can explore the little island here, hopefully find some gear. I'm pretty sure yarn is just a Trinket or vendor trash. You know, another nice thing about diplomacy is I believe it gives us better prices uh, at the vendors. But we're going to be stealing a lot of stuff from vendors in this game. <laughs> uh, wading out of the freezing surf, you lose your foot on the slick stones and fall heavily to the ground. Standing above you on a large rock is a young woman dressed in nautical guild livery. Wet auburn hair clings to her face in the cold. Magi's balls! I was sure I was the only one to make it ashore. And this is an awesome character. Uh, the woman leaps from the rocks, helps you back on your feet. Looking up and down, she fetches a lion skin from her belt and offers it to you. <laughs> you make that a, a drinking horn. It's going to be my ideal uh, party member. See, skin is nearly empty. Save her last mouthful of <laughs> that, that, that last mouthful of brandy. Say yes to brandy, oh fine girl. Drink it down greedily. You know, I don't remember the last time I had brandy. <laughs> I mean, who drinks brandy? Is that a thing in Nor Norway? Give me some brandy. I think it's distilled wine, I want to say. Like super wine. Okay. Uh, listen, you have to get up. We need to get off this beach before you. Or worse. A fate worse than a fate worse than death. Now, beasts, huge sea creatures, I ain't never seen a fall. I saw them dragging down the dead crewmen into a cave. We need supplies and shelter. Cat offers you her hand and drags you to your feet. Also, as I said, there's a cave west of here. I think the crabs dragged off most of the corpses there, but what if? What if they're not all dead? Might be other survivors like you and me. If we can find it, the Nautical Guild would give anything to have it returned to them. Yeah, so it's kind of like the magical black box for ships. So I would say that cave to the west is where we should start looking. Where does it go? Yes, let's go. I found this bow in a cargo bay. We best find you a weapon. 
Now, as I said, she's a really great character because she's got backstab. And backstabbing is a little different uh, than you might think. Uh, you can you don't have to literally be behind a character to use it. Uh, basically, in a situation, let me see if they can get an explanation. Yeah, so if they're flanked or vulnerable, I'm not sure what all is considered vulnerable, but there's a lot of conditions where you can use backstab, uh, even with the bow. Uh, so that's a very useful thing. You get a lot of kills with that. Or you could play her. Um, stick with the, uh, the knife, the blade, the whole time. But we're going to have a lot of melee characters, so I think it's useful to have a... Uh, nice range character. But I like to do both. She's really good with the dagger. She's really good with the bow. She's just really good. Now the thievery, you might think, well, that doesn't sound too good. Pick locks and pockets. But stealing from the shops is a huge thing in this game, so I think it's well worth the point of I stole all the best stuff I got. I stole. And then stealth is really useful too, because it doesn't matter that my other guy's not stealthy put her in charge, I could sneak up and get right where I want to be, uh, right in the midst of the enemies, and set up my party in a very strategic or tactical fashion. Uh, so that's a useful thing as well. Uh, let's see. Probably want to give her a light weapon. Finesse. That gives her better critical bonus with light weapons. Uh, let's see. Piercing damage bonus. So a bow is piercing and a dagger is piercing, so either way, that's a good perk. As I said, the backstabbing is awesome. Looks like I gotta have a full three ranks to get this uh, backstabbing option, but man, you're gonna want that. <laughs> uh, and of course, to really use it effectively, being able to move a long ways is useful. You can see some of the other items here. Increased initiative, that's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, and yeah, she will be using light armor only. And light armor use just means that uh, a reduced encumbrance. I don't think there's that much encumbrance with it. Anyway, let's just see. She doesn't have any armor at the moment. But basically it slows you down by right? encumbrance. So that feat would reduce that. Not a huge deal with light armor, but it could be, if it makes the additional square of movement, that could be more useful than it sounds. I'm gonna bone up a little bit of. I like just uh, having that stealth. All I have to do is put one more point. You know, I'm just gonna go full on. Because <laughs> that way I get stealth and movement. Not too many points. That's gonna be pretty cool. Save it. Now, if I put her in charge, her stealth will be better. But I don't know if her awareness. He's more aware, so he'll be able to spot more stuff. So I'll probably want to lead with him until we get uh, close to some enemies. Oh, well, there's a hand axe. What did I pick up there? Uh, check your tunic's not really going to be good for anything but weighing me down, but we'll put it on. <laughs> I can't even use that axe. She can, but she's got a club. Uh, I guess either way, neither one of these are piercing, so... I guess that hand axe is a little better than the club. There, what's that? A fork. Trading material, I believe. I think I could wield it. Just trinket. Yeah, see, he spotted something. Got some rations. We'll talk about food a little bit later. I look over there, I see some herb. Now, you can see I, I can't click on that to get over there. But I can climb up this. So he's going to have to roll a 7 or above, and she's going to have to roll a 7 or above to make it up there. So we probably won't make it. We could try. Oh, we made it. Okay. Now we can get all these eggs. How do you like your eggs? Oh, crap, I didn't see these things. Grotesquely misshapen crustacean whores feast greedily on the corpses of the dead crew of the Zephyr. Blasted horrors! 
cat spits through gritted, gritted, gritted teeth. <laughs> you know, I played this whole thing. I didn't notice these errors until now. Uh, what manner of force has spawned these creatures? What manner of force? Oh, good. They didn't activate. So I, I can still sneak up on them, I think. I guess they can't reach me up here. Trying to get all these eggs. Okay, we click on them to see. Just level one vermin. So we could probably take them. You know what? Yeah, since she's not going to use that club, I'll give it to my guy. Oh, there's some rags. <laughs> I'd rather wear my checkered tunic. her checkered tunic not weigh anything. Anyway. Try to climb up one more time. Ooh, I don't like my odds here. Failure. Yeah, damage me. Let's try it again. Try cat. Oh, she made it. Oh, I got all this other stuff. Now these are, some of this is for cooking, some of this is for alchemy. But it's always good to have. I see a guy up there. Save. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's a spot I can rest. Awesome. Uh, telescope. So I can look through the telescope. You can see the how the sea is. Examine the sky. Sure. And lower plus five. Let's see. I think his floor is a little better. I wonder if he can do it. Nope, only once. So some of those are hard rolls, or uh, I think they call them static rolls. So I don't get the roll on that. It's either I have enough lore or I don't. There's my friend. Got me a rope. Okay. Astronomer's journal. Right, so we get a little bit more of the backstory. There's a lot of weird stuff happening. The stars are wrong. It really is kind of a creepy story. As uh, even though I'm just skipping it here, you definitely don't want to skip it on your play. So that's half the fun. It's a good story. You'll like it. All right, standing on the edge of the cliff is a crewman from the Zephyr. By the dead, I just saw it out there. The thing that sunk us, it's still out there. I guess we can't. Without anyone else alive? I think we might come back to him later, perhaps. Let's see. You know, I could rest, but... I don't see some more monsters over there. There's one more. There's one more nest. Okay. I don't think we need to rest. Let's see how tough this battle is. Okay, so I'm going to this cave, or I can go back down. Let's see if we can sneak up on these people. Or those crabs. <laughs> Actually, maybe I can't get down there. Oh, maybe I have to go the long way. Oh, this rolling. Oh, I saw an option to fix the rope. Yeah, you see, they're about to spot me. I really want to sneak up on them. Nope. Okay. How do I... Oh wow, they gotta go a long way. I don't know if she can shoot her bow at unlimited range. Guess we'll find out. Once I click on her bow... There we go. So I'm gonna probably be able to take these things out before they get to me. Okay. I don't think he's... You know what the heck, we can try that. Sure will. <laughs> uh, 
Alright, that used up his movement points. I probably should have moved first and then used it. I could take a potion if I really thought this was going to be a tough battle. Now one problem you will run into is not having enough arrows. Oh, he's really wedged in there. I put him in a bad spot. Really got no choice but to waste her movement. Or waste a turn there just to shift into position. It's okay. Could have been a little bit smarter with how I... Oh, backstab, see? Why did he get... Oh, he was panicked! Yeah, so... You know, sometimes when you kill something, the other monsters run up in panic, and that counts as vulnerable. And then her backstab kicks in. So you see what I'm talking about? You're really going to want her in the party. Plus, when we get to the shop, she can steal everything. <laughs> All right, victory! Didn't even take a point of damage. And we got some chitin! I see an herb over there. Yeah, let's pick up that herb. Oh, well. <laughs> Don't go that far. Come back. Let's see if we can get over there to that cave. There you go. Good job, Bart. Got some... Oh, it's just one piece of gold. You know, it is a little thing, but I appreciate that when you've already searched something, it turns to gray. Just so you know you've searched it already. You know, it's the little things matter. Okay, let's turn on our stealth again. Save it. Eons worth of the seas ravage upon the land has given birth to this cave. From its depths, a stench of seaweed and rotting flesh rises. So foul is it that it feels like some evil entity attempting to force its way through the pores of your skin into the core of your being. It's like a really nasty locker room. I guess she's the leader, so I'll have to go with her, her role. No, I can switch. Oh, they're both eight anyway. Success! Stealing your resolve, you manage to calm your breathing. Though the stench persists, you manage to push the image of foul things in the darkness. Okay, let's go back to Cat. Turn on stealth. Got me some cave, child. Now you see that it's ticking off that uh, stealth, so we know we got an, an enemy up there. Or a couple. And I was able to get right up to them, so then I'll get the first. I believe they'll be uh, vulnerable or. Let's move her back. Put him in the, ch in the midst. Okay. Yeah, I think she'll be able to use her backstab. Let's see. Yeah, backstab. Since I was able to sneak up on him, caught him by surprise, I'll be able to do so. Some good damage, and they're all panicked now. They're just now coming online, so she gets another. Now, I could use a waste of arrow there, but I think it's time to switch to the hat. <laughs> to the hatchet. Yeah, save some arrows. Okay, so they're just now awake. In. Now, I think that one, yeah, he's his. his I don't think he's vulnerable anymore. So, what I can try to do is position myself, but I don't think it's going to work because I think if she tries to move, we'll, we'll try it just to see, but I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work. We'll try. It. Yeah, so you have to disengage. So, if you come within melee range and then to leave, you basically lose your turn if you leave and disengage. However, there is a feat she can get later that will nullify that, uh, so we can move her around without having to worry about disengaging. As I said, she's just a rare... <laughs> You're definitely going to want her in your party. Okay. Yeah, the soak. Uh, what that does is basically nullifies some of the damage. Okay, we can get her behind. Now she'll be able to backstab. That other guy's panicked. Now he's really panicked. Uh, so I should be able to reach that one and do the backstab. Go ahead and do that. Oh, he's still alive. Okay. Charge! Oh, I, 
I clicked the wrong spot. You know, that happens sometimes. It's a little bit fussy sometimes with the movement. Another cool thing is you sometimes get some of your arrows back. Which I always thought that was dumb in other games. You know, like, you can't uh, collect some of the arrows that you shot. I mean, some of them you would lose, or some would break, sure, but wouldn't it make sense that you'd be able to get some of them back? So they actually have some uh, some feats that will let you collect more of the arrows. And you can make some arrows, flitching they call it. Alright, let's try to pick the lock. You need lock picks to be able to do that. Ooh. Oh, I got some poor old scale, man. Another lantern, I can always sell it. What's this? Okay, not sure. Give me a little message there. Alright, I think we're gonna want that armor. Yes, sir. Poor scale mail. So the soak, measure of damage absorption, use it for my armor. For every physical attack scored on the character, the damage is reduced by a random amount ranging from zero to the character's combined so so if I got hit for five points of damage in theory there's a chance that's to tell me what the odds are not quite sure how that's determined but I guess there's some chance I wouldn't take any damage from that but it will also encumber me and it's medium armor so you want to make note of all that let's see what else did I pick up there a dagger I give her the dagger be a lot better than that hand axe for her. Alright. I save it. I'm getting kind of beat up here. I might want to rest up before we do anything else because uh, I don't want to get wounded. Let's see. Where was that spot I could rest? I guess I gotta... Well, let's fix the rope. There we go. That's a good use for a rope. Won't be an issue once they get rolling anymore because there's athletic scores. Really great. Alright, let's go ahead and rest up. Now, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot to this. I'll skip this to show you. Uh, I've only got two people, so I don't need a whole lot of food. It's basically ten points of food, ten units of food uh, per person. I can cover that with two rations. Uh, later, I'll be able to cook up all kinds of good food and won't have a problem with uh, having enough food to eat. Uh, you can see that I've got uh, training as an option, foraging, fletching, entertaining, and training. Uh, training based on the lore, so not a very good chance that's going to be successful. Foraging, uh... That's a survival roll. A little bit better chance there. Uh, fletching. You know, later in the game, I just put everybody on fletching because I just could never have enough arrows. Uh, but it looks like the most likely thing would be to entertain, and that will provide a motivation bonus. Now, for her, I think... Yeah, she could try to make some arrows. Probably the best thing. Either that or foraging, but I think fletching. And then I just rest. I, don't to, I never get attacked while I rested. I don't know if that's sometimes a thing. I never had it happen. Okay, I don't know. That I, I didn't even look to see if she made any arrows. But I do have motivation now. So I get plus one initiative to my initiative and plus one to willpower. Both awesome. Now, I'm pretty sure that just lasts throughout the whole day, too. Don't have any more ropes, so we might take a little damage on this. Oh, made it. Yeah, obviously the. Oh, what the hell? Ooh, got some dire hounds here. How are they gonna get to me? Huh. That's curious. I don't know if they can fly or what? We'll find out. Both. I guess they know the way. <laughs> I think they're going this way. How's he gonna get to me? Let me 
me on this one. I guess I can always uh, defend. Oh, I guess I can go all the way around. Yeah, so if I have enough arrows... Oh, she missed. Come on, cat! I guess I need to move him this way. One down. Move him into position. He's still coming. Critical! <laughs> Bam! Yeah, then I even leveled up. How about that? I like too how it just automatically does the loot for you. Uh oh. A blood curdling howl. Is that the stuff I fought? No, but anyway, you don't have to loot corpses, it does it automatically. Alright, get another plus four vitality, another four too much, and then get to uh, come back to this screen and just you always get three points, I believe. I don't know, maybe there's a class or some way to get more points. Okay, well, I don't want that one. You know, it's kind of sad. I, I still have that maze I'm wielding. Let's see, what would be good to have? I still don't have any spells. You know, if I do this, I will get some spells for sure. So let's go ahead and do that, because I'm tired of not having any spells to cast. And I think I'll stick my last point in... Uh... Let's see, I don't want that. Definitely not worth that. I'm trying to think ahead to what might be really useful to have. I guess I'll bone up for sword, even though I don't have a sword yet. I could put a point there, but... Huh? So many choices! Let's go ahead and bone up the sword a little bit. Okay, now I can pick a spell. I think minor lay on hands is kind of a no-brainer. That gives you agility bonus. This gives poison. Yeah, I didn't have a big problem with poison, so I might go for bare strength instead. be a good thing to cast on myself. I don't have anything better to do. Oh, look at all these sweet herbs. If you collect all the herbs and you have plenty of potions, then you probably won't even need to use those spells like that. Well, this guy... It seems clear that this person fell or jumped from the cliffs above. Unfortunately, he does not have any loot. But I've got onions. Uh, sorrow eater. Okay, keep him on. I might turn on the stealth just to see if I can get a heads up. Ooh, is that pumpkins? Yes, it is. Uh, the small farm is overgrown and derelict, and it appears to be abandoned. At one point, you noticed this must have been a quaint place. A good spot to raise a family. Suddenly, as if summoned by your very thoughts, the faint but unmistakable sound of children's laughter is carried on the wind, really distorted with a strange echoing quality. For some reason, it chills you to your bones. The sound is interrupted by a woman's cry of pain, perhaps in sorrow. Yeah, see, good writing. Doesn't belabor the point. Doesn't just go on and on. It says what it needs to say to set the tone. And then gets out of your way. Good storytelling. Reds and ends. Okay, here's the cook pot. I've already shown you this. But you see we have enough stuff to make uh, some more salted fish. Or we could try to make a pumpkin pie. You see, I don't have the any other ingredients for that. And we could try to make some more salted fish. Might as well, I guess. No, wait, I guess I don't have the ingredients. Oh, that's strange. Okay. There's a chest. The chest ahead of you is wet, covered in seaweed. It's your luggage from the Zephyr! Nice. 
All right, so we get our stuff back. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this this scale mail is much better than the poor scale mail. So we can put that on, and also have a fine mace. I guess that's better than the. I don't have. I still don't have my sword. Yeah, that's a fine mace. <laughs> I don't think she gets any upgrades. Yeah, she can't wear the uh, the scale mail. Let's see, I don't need to rest, I don't need to cook, so I guess we are good to go on. A woman sits in the grass ahead of you with the well looming over her. She is emaciated, ragged, and covered in lime. How long has she been sitting here? Days? Weeks? The queer sound of playful children's laughter rises from the well. Creepy! What has happened? It took them. Called out to them. I heard it. Funny thing is, I heard it calling with my voice. Oleg and Anya live in the well now. They're calling for me to join them. <laughs> Can I help? We'll never stop. It will multiply until it covers all the lands and all the seas. And we, we are all dead and bones. The conqueror of moles will dress our corpses in black morning bells. He's a bit disturbed, but we can hear the sickening sound of children's laughter. This, you know, this is the creep factor makes your hair stand up. I mean, it's it's just really well done. He's totally nailed that Lovecraft vibe. You know, the thing about Lovecraft is it's not, uh, you know, what what I call that something jumping out at jump scare kind of humor. Like this deep psychological stuff. How do I get to that? There must be a secret entrance around here somewhere. Could it be the well? The well seems ordinary enough until you examine it more closely. A thin layer of slimy black mold seems to cling to its walls, and a heavy odor of filth rises from its depths. You swear you heard something splash around in the water. Yeah, save it, double save it, and save it again. Yeah, this mold is bad business. As you descend deeper into the earthy cave, you realize that the black mold covers most of the walls. Even the air is thick with floating black. Now you see, that's a nice detail. Even the air is thick with floating black specks. You can sort of see that, right? Uh, here and there, the mold seems to form nodules. Your mind fills with images of the nodules bursting open an obscene mockery of birth and black worm-like tendrils of mold spilling forth into the world. An irrational urge to touch the nodes begins to grow inside you. Yeah, don't touch the mold. Turning off my stealth. Nope, touch the mold. Perhaps it's the thickness of the air or the sickly miasmas. Miasmas that fill this part of the cave when stars flash before your eyes. Your mind is assaulted with images of alien landscapes. Now, this is very Lovecrafty in here. If you've ever read Lovecraft, you, you're picking up the vibe. Cities. No, giant living structures. Almost like the quarrel of the traders from the city and sometimes battle. So large. Then you see it. The structures themselves writhe with obscene life. Innumerable black innumerable black worm-like tendrils of black mold. <laughs> Give in? <laughs> yeah, don't pick that option. Carry on. You know, sometimes it's kind of a bit of a Darwin award. <laughs> Uh, you feel as if you're dragged under into the crushing blackness into unfathomable, unfathomable depths. Stars flash before your eyes again. Cyclopean, cyc cyclopean, 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 cyclopean. Words comes from cyclops. Anyway, uh, edifices of writhing black shapes. Age of worms. This is not some alien dreamscape. This is more. Uh, this is. You are a high priest, a 
god regent of a perfect world. And now it is time the sky under seven I see it comes give yourself to it Yeah, carry on. <laughs> don't give me I don't know. Okay, he will automatically succeed. It's a static roll. Gathering all your willpower, you rest back control of your faculties and forge your head. On the wall ahead you spot it. A festering ganglion of black ichor with two small human skulls leering from it. The mass of glistening mold pulsates with grotesque peristaltic motion. As you approach it, Embedded in it is a collection of small animal bones. Nonetheless, you have no problem identifying two complete small human skeletons. Well, that's sad. One by one, you pry loose the bones. Its motions become more and more agitated as you look. And a wave of relief washes over you as the last piece comes loose. Now you must make your way out of this death trap. AKA, turn on stealth mode, but you probably won't matter because I got a feeling that we're going to be fighting very, very soon. So can we make it out? No. <laughs> they go! The, the two diminutive shapes materialize as if from the very walls themselves. Bodies alive with writing, writing, with writing, probably writhing mold. Their blank, idiotic faces stare up at you in a grotesque imitation of your life. Your blood runs cold as organs that never should shape human voices spell forth the sound of children laughing. A loud shriek escapes from the horrors of the maelstrom of, of writing. Maybe, maybe it is writing. Of writing blackness. The two pathetic sir creatures reshape the divine forms of tower over your body. So we could try to use athletics. Let's see. Now we succeeded. Feigning left them dashing right, and you managed to slip past the mindless creatures, and before they managed to regain their bearings, you clambered up the rope and escaped the well. A faint mother escapes from below. I hope that doesn't mean I missed out on the XP for all those things. Alright, give her the bones. Complete the quest. She takes a small bundle of bones in her arms as if it was a swaddled infant. Set her free. Oh. So she left us a package. Did you hear something? A child's voice, perhaps? Or was it just the wind? Wait, I don't see. Did she give me something? I don't see anything. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, there's a cookbook. So all I have to do is read the cookbook, and I think, yeah, it gives me these recipes. So we got vegetable soup and farmer's omelet now. And a potion to cure disease and a ring. You want to see if we can go back down and kill those things anyway? <laughs> yeah. Let's kill it anyway and double up on her XP. No, child. I guess I could put him there. Probably put her right behind him, I'm thinking. Okay. Right. Now I've got my spells. The only problem is this will use my turn. I won't be able to attack. Let's just uh, attack instead. Now I can't get her back here. I have to lose a lot of moves to get her there, so let's just use the bow. You know, I would like to get her behind so she could use her backstab. I think we're okay here. Matter of fact, I think we can just finish this thing off with the dagger. There we go. 92 XP. And got some rot. You know, I love it when you get double, double the XP. So I got the reward for not being violent. And then I went around. And... Now, how do I get in there? That is going to bother me. How do I get in there? 
think it's a secret entrance from the well, maybe? Here. Must be some secret. There's some way in there. Must be a way in from the well. Let's give this uh, well another look. Make sure we didn't miss anything. Try clicking around there. Must be another way. Click, 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 click. Yeah, I guess not. That was worth a shot. There's some way to get in there. <laughs> Maybe I don't find out until later. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Bumping up on something there. Don't really need to rest yet. Who's this? The Wreck Picker. A lanky man with skin like sun-dried leather stares slack-jawed at you. He's dressed in rags and with a wide-brimmed hat and a large bundle of scrap slung over his shoulder. Did the sailor's eyes deceive him? More ghosts? Or did the sea spit you back out alive? Not many are that lucky. Your eyes fall on the crude spiked club that hangs in his belt. The sailor makes his living picking at what the mother of Maelstrom's does not smell her. And it's been rich pickings as of late. Crates and barrels, even the odd fleshy morsel? The man bears a row of blackened teeth, in which you assume is a smile. Uh, what's the club for? The club is caked in dried blood and a crude design. It has the look of a tool used well and often. The silo chuckles. Every now and then, Mother Maestrom offers up a little fish that has a bit of fun. All Basilio does is help put, put them to rest. How many fish did you put to sleep today? Don't worry, Basilio did them all nice. Just like Father taught him. Anyone still squirming gets a knock on his shell till he's good and flappy. Not to worry, I've been doing it for years. Just to help my da hold him down while he did the knocking, quick as he like. <laughs> you murder survivors to steal their belongings? The drowned man belonged to mother. So we're gonna attack this murderer or let him go? Attack. You shouldn't be all healthy and like. Well the most I'm offering you up for me. Vasily will make you stop squirming, little fish. And yeah, this, this, <laughs> this is so creepy. Okay, let's see if I can get. Alright, let's see. So I can't move there now, but I'm gonna try putting her there. So we can get the back stab. Again, come back. Perfect. Perfect. Backstab. Yeah. Wait, imagine when we get that backstab pumped up. You know, she's just gonna be one shot people. I don't even think we need to get fancy with this guy. Victory. Excellent. Yeah, I don't know about killing that guy. I guess it was the right thing to do. This might be a good time to level up. Okay, yeah, I guess it would be if I actually had the XP. Okay. There's one thing I've noticed is if you're not sure if you can get somewhere, you can just click on the spot. Sure, you've explored the whole map. This little spot over there I haven't explored. It's really good, I think, to explore the whole map because there's a lot of secret stuff. So really try to give it a good clicky clicky. <laughs> yeah, see, like, can I snake around that coastline? No, but it was worth a try. Okay, well. There's 
Some way out of here. Hmm. I think I've kind of lost the thread of what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> oh, I've got a battle up here. Oh, I've got some of these hell dogs. Okay, I'll try my little maneuver again. It would have been better to sneak up on these guys. Yeah, see now, she's kind of messed up now, because if I try to get here, uh, she'll, she's going to get engaged as soon as she enters this spot. So I'll just keep her there for now. Hopefully it pres Oh, I, this is... This might be a serious battle here. Let's see. I wonder if it's worth trying to cast a spell with... Make a potion. Let's see. Oh, no. Don't want to waste an arrow when he's in melee range. You always want to take an enemy out if you can, instead of having everybody damage their own enemy. Backstab. You see what I'm telling you about the backstab? I hope that's clear. That is extremely useful. Yeah, I'm thinking, I think I've probably taken enough damage to. Well, you know what? We could use our lay on, lay on hands instead. <clears throat> that way we can just keep, keep on rolling. Now, I could go up north and that'll put me on the next screen. I'm trying to just figure out if we've explored everything. Uh oh, that sucked. Wasn't there another cave somewhere? I think we've explored everything yet. I'm gonna keep on. If I don't die. Pretty sure I saw another cave. How do I get over there? Ah! The world for an auto map. You know, I might need to rest again. There's another cave. But maybe it's down here. Well, they seem to know where they're going. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are two caves. Okay. Yeah, there's the rope. Okay. Yeah, there's one cave down there, but there is the limit. Is this the same cave I was in before? Okay, it's... Oh, is this the same cave? I don't think so, because... No, it's a different one. Yeah, so we can go ahead and clean out this cave, too. Probably get some cool stuff. Now, I should have snuck up on these guys. But he's panicked. And use a spell this time just so you can see what it looks like. I can put bear strength on it. That'll last the whole combat. Let's see how much strength does it give me. Uh, fortified strength. Plus two. So not bad. It's a little tricky sometimes getting making sure you're lined up on the enemy. Like here, it's always confusing. Is this the spot that's adjacent to him? So. Yeah, now he's doing two extra points of damage per hit. You see, she's about out of arrows. Injured head. So I might. She's down to two arrows. I think I'm going to switch to my knife and just try to finish this the hog way. Critical backstab. That's the best kind of backstab. <laughs> I can serve a few arrows and hopefully she'll... Nope, she didn't get me. Sometimes at the end of the battle you get some arrows back, but not the time. I don't know if that's a 
Is that crafting or survival? I'm not sure what attribute determines that. Toughness. Okay, we've got some more of this rot to deal with. Whew, glad I made that roll. Grit alone. I should probably do another miner. Fill myself up a little bit. Cats love to go ahead and I think I'm about out of points anyway. Okay. On the stealth. Uh, ooh, ooh, mastered armor gauntlets of toughness. That sounds useful. Plus one to toughness. And it's got a soak on it and encumbrance on it. I guess she could wear it too. But since he's going to be tanking more, I think I'll put it on him. Oh, there's a body over there, too. The corpses of the Doom crew of the Zephyr. Oh, that's who these guys are. Cold light shines down from an aperture in the vault of the cave ceiling, illuminated the bloated features of the Hound Is there a form of artistry to their arrangement? Interloper. Wow, I got 450 XP. It's Zephyr's first mate. Oh, this is the Captain Seal we were looking for. For that black box. Strange stalked eyes regard you. I can try to sneak away. Let's see if we can sneak away and then come back and find him anyway. Okay. Yeah, she's leveled up. Let's see what we can do here. Three points. This backstab damage sure is sweet. You see this? You see how useful this evasive would be, though. If I had this, then I could really move around. Uh, it wouldn't matter if I engaged; I could still swing around in the backstabbing position. You know, before the first time I played this, I really did focused on the bow. I'm thinking this time I might see if I can orient more towards the uh, the dagger side. Does that make sense? I guess we can do it that way. I mean, eventually you get to a point where you got all the arrows you need, but man, it sure is a pain to run out. Yeah, now we can hopefully sneak up on these guys. There we go. You get a free round on them. We don't want her down there, though. Well, what do you think? Uh, no. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's put him. Let's see if I can put her there. Yeah. Put him there. Okay. And you should backstab. Oh, I guess not. I thought I snuck up on him. Maybe not. Oh, I messed up. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, that didn't cost me the battle. That was a bad screw up there. He doesn't have... Yeah. <laughs> I might have to reload this. I, I thought she would be able to backstab. He's in a really bad spot there. Doesn't have any good potions. Yeah, I'm almost gonna say just reload. <laughs> oh, yeah, reload. Okay, too many mistakes. <laughs> too many mistakes. That was badly done. I could have sworn I snuck up on him. Let's try it again. I should be able to sneak up on these guys. Or maybe it's just set so you can't sneak up on them. Yeah, I think that's what's happening here. 
But anyway, surely I don't need to uh, take three of them at a time. Move him there. Her. Yeah, I can't think of how I can really get into a good flanking position. Let's just try this. Maybe I can knock one out of mount. Oh, what the hell are you? That is not what I wanted to do. Ooh, now she's the one getting doubled up on. Right. I'm gonna have to disengage her pretty quick if we can't get rid of this guy. Maybe it'd be useful to see for you to see the <laughs> wounded system. But I'm gonna back her out of battle. It's, ooh, my guy doesn't have much health either, but that's a problem. Cannot fire in melee. Oh, she's still in melee. Oh, this is just going from bad to worse here. <laughs> At least I didn't heal the crab. to kill one. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Oh, I didn't... Oh, don't disengage. Crap. That was really unfortunate. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm losing just... You know, sometimes this interface can get a little bit wonky. You know, if you click just the wrong... you got to be just the right spot to do it. I'm gonna try to figure this out better too. It's gotta be. I don't know why it's not letting me sneak up on it, but anyway. Let's try to get a nice. Yeah, let's do it this way so we can get some shots at them before they get to me. Yeah, let's put you here. Try to get some shots with the bow before they get too close. This is just... <laughs> I don't have anything to help with this battle. Yikes. Critical hit. Yeah, see, it's just... They're gonna be doing a lot of damage. Oh, and she's out of ammo. This just gets better and better. Charge. Well, at least you got a charge point. All right. I think I got one down. Ooh, these things do a lot of damage. Oh, he wasn't even dead! Uh, I don't like having two separate enemies I'm fighting. Now let's just fight it to the bitter end. They're panicked now. Okay. I think I'm just barely going to be able to get through that. So you can see, I mean, it doesn't play around. Now I definitely have the rest before I can do anything else. Let's see. He's getting a decent treasure. You know, one thing about this game, though, if you start thinking, oh, this is just too hard, you know, just be patient because you will get some more party members. Right, what is this? Probably won't be able to make that roll. <laughs> yeah. You can keep the coin. Yeah, some more very foul language that we'll skip over. But basically, she's got a little mission we can help her with. Okay, yes, that's stuff for sure. Whew! That was tough. All right. Let's see. Maybe she'll make an arrow. No. Oh, yeah. I forgot. If they're wounded, they don't do anything in camp. So it's yet another reason to try to keep everybody from getting wounded. But anyway, we're back in business. Let's go back in there and see if there's anything else we may have missed. I think we've got everything that we really need, though. Well, 
Looks like there's a chest. Not picking the lock. Got it. Ooh! Ooh, helmet of awareness. Perfect. Plus one to awareness. Let's see, can let me get that? You know, sometimes it won't let you get a thing. <laughs> That's enough to drive some people crazy, I know. Ooh, I see a bad guy over there. Oh, this takes me back. Oh, that's how you get in here. Okay. I'll get over there to that joker. This is a lot too, this dungeon. Hmm. I think I've been there already, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, this is the, where an auto map would be nice. Oh, wait. I got attacked? Oh, this is nasty. I hope these aren't the big baddies. No, I don't think that's the right approach. Do it this way so she only gets attacked by the one. Okay. Now these are easy enough enemies. I can see already I need to get some accuracy on both of these characters. They are missing too much! Bad guys don't seem to have that problem. Oh, come on, quit missing! Oh, you're gonna die! Quit missing! Now, I don't think he can reach over there. I could swap places with her. Uh, I guess I'll do that. Kind of a waste of turn, but... Oh, she still doesn't have any arrows, huh? Oh, she's got an arrow. Probably already need to run back up and rest again. These are not easy. Hey, who's this guy? Who goes there? A haggard man dressed in the livery of the Monocle Guild huddles apprehensively in the corner of the small chamber you're standing in. Dead Emperors, please tell me you found a way out of this pit. I have. Explain the way to the exit. Thank you. So later on, a little minor spoiler, there's a little quest to gather up all the survivors. So that was well worth coming down here for. Trick. Locked. Cure poison, cure disease. Always good to have some of those kinds of potions. Save. <laughs> Matter of fact, Ooh. Yeah, I think I want to heal up a little bit before we try to fight anything else. I sure will be happy when I level up again. Okay. Let's see. If we can sneak up on these guys. Yeah, not alert. Okay, that's how it's supposed to work. We ought to be able to make some easy kills here. Backstab. Boom. So they're just now alert. So you basically get a free round of combat. If you're smart. Oh, she missed a backstab? Oh, I should have left them there, though. Oh, poison. Love that. 252 XP. Now you see I picked up a... Oh, he leveled up. 
Let's see, I think I'll try to get outside this first screen and go to the next zone before we stop. And then I'll show you a little bit of the later game here. Not before we adjourn. Okay, I need something that gives me more accuracy with that sword. Uh, that may not be an option yet. Increased willpower. Increased attunement will give me more spell points. Uh, the increased spell aura radius is a huge thing. Very useful. But I think maybe even more than that, I need to get some more spells. And unfortunately, there's not a way to see the list of spells, at least as far as I know. Oh, this is a tough call here. Uh, it's just going to be a wasted point there. If I put that in, at least I get sword damage. Let's see, I've got to make sure it's... No, it's disease, not poison. Good thing to check that. Uh, cure disease. Get rid of that, because... I don't think those are the creatures I saw earlier. I'm going to say they were, like, over here somewhere. There. I definitely saw some more monsters. Hmm. Maybe I just imagined it. You know, it's, it is easy to get turned around in these caves. In there. Look up online, but I. Oh, here we go. No. Oh, maybe it's down here. Okay. No. Oh, look! I see him over there! Look! How do I get over there? Secrets within secrets. One thing I can figure there must be a secret. Door somewhere. All right, spend all day on it. You now you get this this hankering though to see everything there is to see, and then you. <laughs> oh, I probably should have. Uh... Let's see, can I get back? Okay, I think that's about all we can do. We can check the journal, but I'm pretty sure that's all we can do here. So we've completed four quests. Let me just jump to the next screen. Uh, just kidding. Yeah, surely you can roll a four. Okay. So just go all the way to the top of the screen, and this will put you on the world map. East of you is a lighthouse. Beyond that lies a bay. There's something wrong here on the island. Something we really be yeah, no kidding. That she had to have been something important. Oh, I guess she doesn't know why we're here. We're here to find uh, the uh, emblem. Okay, she gives us a couple of tips on where to go. Warren. <laughs> I'd prefer it if you lost the strategy to me. That's not nice. Great adventures may lie ahead, but so does great terror. That is true. Okay, so this will probably be a pretty good spot, I think, to... Well, I might go on a little bit more. But you see, this this world map here, uh, it's very Ultima-like, I think, which I think everybody can appreciate. Uh, some of the stuff still... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, there have been certain places... I think you hold down the shift key to see them. Does that work? Yeah. Uh, but there's also random encounters on the map. And one of the things I like about this game so much is that you, you can go all the way to level 20. That's the level cap. And you don't really have to grind to hit the level cap. Uh, on my first, all I did was a side quest, a few random encounters here and there. And I was level 20, and I still had about, oh, you know, maybe two, two to five percent of the game left. 
uh, to play. So I had enough time to see, you know, to use all my level 20 uh, goodies. Uh, I don't like it in the game where you hit the level cap way early and you got like another quarter of the game left and there's nothing to look forward to anymore other than just grinding through to the end. Uh, so I say all that just to say there's no real reason to grind, you know, go out trying to search for random encounters. Uh, you'll definitely be leveling at a good clip. It's very well paced uh, without having just to grind on stuff. Okay. You see a figure thrashing at violent at something. Pretty sure. Yeah, this is Roland, so I remember him. Uh, so he's got a little battle going there. Says so I got a few lives left. <laughs> you tried to save me, you bloody idiot. He's a bit gruff, but he's a really good character. Yeah, it's work to be done. Drop the bloody heroics. This business makes your hands dirty. I guess he's, what, a chaotic, or a lawful uh, neutral, or maybe chaotic good, or something? What do you call somebody that's just pragmatic? There are men in the fog. And there's the men. You know, you can just tell sometimes that these are bad guys. Call out to the men? Let's see. Okay, good. It kept my stuff. Now, last time I feel like it, for whatever reason, I came back to him later and he had like points and shield and archery. I could just be imagining that though. Okay, so I could put a point in medium, and then that opens up heavy. Uh, so, just I want to show you. Like, you probably wouldn't want to put a bunch of points in light. And there's really no reason to do that. You just need the one point to open up this, and then if you eventually want to end up in heavy armor, you just want to, again, skip this and go straight to that one. Uh, we'll just leave that there. Because, again, I'm trying to get the multi-attack is what I really want to get to. Oh, I guess I have to be level 5. What level am I? Not sure what level I am, but I still got three points. Okay. Accuracy, no thanks. Second man would be good, but I'm gonna go with that and that for now. I really want to make a zip uh, for the. Oh, this is gonna encumber him quite a bit. It's only gonna add one soak. So I might actually be better off just leaving him in the leather armor for now. Because he's going to be needing to move around to do his charge. Okay. You have to decide, you know, if you want to max out the medium armor, just have him do that. Or, since he's not going to have a shield, he might want the heavy armor. And then if you put all your points into that, he'll get some decent movement. This depends, I guess, on how dependent you want to be on charge. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I want to get into one fight with the three of us. And then... Let me back out. Oh, crap. Yeah, let's do one fight with the three of us, and then I think I'll stop there. And we can skip to the some of my later game, and I can talk about some of the other points. Okay, is that good? I guess it could come from underneath. Yeah, let's... Now remember with that phalanx, I don't really, I'm not sure if I have it on these guys, but with that, if you have them adjacent to each other, you get a little dodge bonus, it's quite nice. And you see I'm already completely out of arrows, so that's not even an option for me. Let's just hold the action. Okay, he can charge in and do his two-handed swing. I guess he didn't quite have enough points to to swing. Oh, yeah, 14 damage, but he's taking a lot. And unfortunately, all my heals mean that I have to be next to him. <laughs> Let's see. She's not in a good position at all. She's got to go all the way around. Let's just have her defend for now. 
think I'm gonna die before this guy. Yeah, he's down. Crap. You know, I could reload and try to get a little better start to this. You know, if I'd have snuck up on these guys, I'd obviously be in much better shape right now. Let's see, I better heal him up. He doesn't heal a lot. Oh, I forgot about the Cascade. Yeah, so what that does is there's a chance that you can cast a spell and then do something else, maybe cast another spell, or move, or uh, attack. So that's what that Cascade is. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Backstab. Okay, that one's panicked. Let's see, can I reach it? She can't quite reach. She's not panicked anymore. Oh, come on. Oh, just up to her. <laughs> that was close. Okay, unfortunately, I can't. I have to go back. How do I get out of here? I can rest here. Yeah, so thankfully all we got to do is rest, but you'll notice it's going to cost 30 now. And I don't think I got any more salted fish either. So a little bit of trouble with food. I think it's going to take pretty much everything I got here to feed these guys. And I think he's good with foraging, yeah, so he should be able to find a ration. But since he's wounded, he won't be doing anything. So very costly rest, two wounded people. But, you know, again, if I'd have snuck up on him, I'm sure he could have got a lot better positioning. Okay, so this is a pretty good stop point here. As you can see, I'm having lots of fun with this. Barely scratched the surface of this game, but I want to stop it here. I'm going to get some lunch, come back, and I'll show you some of the, some of the game where I got my other part at the end of it. So I will be right back. Uh, yeah, we're back. <laughs> you ever wonder what I had for lunch? A peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know, it's a humble, a humble lunch, but you know, it's it's packed with protein, especially if you have it on some decent bread. All right, let's look at some of my save games here with my officer. Officer, officer. I wonder if I have one. I got some at level 20. Uh, I'll save those. You might not want to see that far ahead. Let's see, where is the good... <laughs> I wish I had one. There's a certain place in the game. This might be it. Where there's a lot of rat-themed characters. This is pretty good. You know what? I'm going to show you the... I, mean, I will skip to the... To this save, I think. Yeah, level 20. This way you can see the full spread of abilities and maneuvers and everything. Let's see if I get to some combat here. Looks like everybody's good to go. Adventure Falls. I'll just get into a little random battle here random encounter so we can look at all these abilities and stuff. Yeah, so these are one of the random encounters I was telling you about. Uh, especially at this point of the game, everybody's level 20, uh, so there's really no reason to fight these unless you just want to collect some reagents, I guess, or some gold or something. Uh, so you could uh, try to flee based on athletics or sneak away based on stealth, or you could try to parlay based on diplomacy. Uh, so this is another good reason to level up those skills. Okay, you can see I got a lot of more characters now. I got a full party. And these are some of the characters that I ran into. For some of these, you'll recognize. Now I've got her. Uh, let's see, I don't know if I'll be able to bring up her character sheet. I don't know if I showed you this over here, but this is the uh, combat order, the initiative. So you can see which ghouls are going to get to go first. So you, you could really get tactical with this. You're really getting into the minutia 
but I will move, just keep her out of the way, keep my mage out of the way, obviously. She can't wear any armor at all, so I really don't want her in harm's way. Let's see, then I got this ranger. I mean, all of these NPCs, all of these uh, pre-made characters are awesome, they got awesome abilities. Uh, and you can level them up, choose feats for them. So you really can't go wrong. This is a, <laughs> this is a lot of mobs. <laughs> Frost Shamblers. So, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned this either, but if you right-click on these guys, you get their character sheet, their monster sheet, I guess, and it'll tell you, uh, I don't know if they should have put this in or not, but it'll, give, it'll tell you what their vulnerabilities are. So this is vulnerable to sublime damage, so basically holy damage, see what they're immune to. Uh, so you don't have to waste spells, or you can think about a, you know, what spell you want to cast based on that. Okay, let's go ahead and start this. A couple of them get to go first. That guy can't do anything. Okay, and then my rogue gets to go first. Now, if I go in my inventory and try to change the type of arrows or something, that will cost her that point. So I don't want to do that. Now this little green guy here, the green helmet, is a maneuver. If we can look, she can hide in combat. It's basically her thing, yeah, and attacking while hidden. So I get a backstab no matter where an enemy is. It will complete this turn. And sometimes you can... I have certain abilities that let me multi attack with her. I think if she gets a critical attack, she gets another attack. So I might save that. Matter of fact, why don't we experiment with that? So I'll very carefully aim at this guy. Okay, she didn't get it that time. Uh, sometimes uh, she gets a multi-attack. Multi okay, whose turn is it now? This is my... Yeah, this is Roland again, but this uh, Roland I, I have with a, uh, an axe and a shield. I kind of like the two-handed. So he can't use anything yet because he's not in range. Let me go ahead and bump him up in the, into the harm's way there. Now he's got a freak. He's got a move that will do a critical strike automatically, or you can do a wild swing for the second win, which you've seen that gives you uh, some healing. Uh, so it took me a little while to get a handle on what these maneuvers are about. So you see, they have a cooldown there and a time use, and so this is a global thing. So you can't use any more uh, maneuvers for two turns if you click that. At least that's my understanding. So the critical strike one, you can see that is takes a three, they won't be able to do this again. So you want to have to decide, is it better to get a critical strike guaranteed or a attack with four plus bonus to damage? And he gets two attacks, but he's used uh, one up to move. I guess if you move, you automatically lose one action. So I'm going to do the critical strike on this guy. Now he's got an ability with his axe that if he gets a critical strike, See it on there. Aim the right one. Oh, I don't know if I did something right there. Maybe this guy. Oh, he's immune. this guy's immune. Of course, some people are immune to critical hits. Uh, but if he wasn't, he would have automatically been injured there. Now the ranger's got some cool abilities. He can cast some spells. It might not be a bad idea considering how many enemies are up there. I could try a web of roots. Targets all opponents and immobilizes them. That sounds like a pretty good maneuver, <laughs> considering how many mobs are up here. Let's try that. Okay, they don't tell me they're immune to paralysis. No. Nope. Alright, now we have our mage. She's got a whole bunch of cool stuff. A lot of cool summon abilities. She's got these cone attacks. Classic fireball. All kinds of stuff. Mass Lethargy, Inferno. This one's kind of interesting. So it damages all of them and allies. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the only thing I could figure with that is if you wanted to cast a, an aura of fire resistance, if you if you could position this just right, you could make everybody resistant, hopefully get a cascade, and then do the inferno, and then you could damage all the enemies without damaging yourself. Now that's rather involved. I think we've got 
Why don't we try the Breath of Glass? Never really... I don't think I'll be able to get too many with that. I'm just going to stick with the Fireball. Because I bet you these guys are immune to poison. Yep. Well, let's just Fireball, try to get as many in as we can. And she looks like she got her cast Jade, so we get to do it again, or we cast something else. Why don't we summon a Magmite? That'll take care of some of these enemies and keep them from going after me. Okay, now it's... Oh, these have some kind of condition on them. Okay, back to the rogue. Uh, no real juicy targets here. Let's go for the one I attacked earlier. Missed. Okay, finally I get a turn. I got an ability called Attack. And it's got a three turn cooldown, but what that does is let everybody attack twice, including him. I was thinking with my Cleric character, you know, I didn't even think about the importance of Cascade with him, but you could imagine going into combat, casting a, some kind of blessing on yourself, get a Cascade, and then get an attack with some Blessed. So it doesn't necessarily mean you would lose the turn, you just have to make sure your Cascade is up there. Okay, let's see, now we're, oh, he gets the second attack. You see, nothing's going to beat that multi-attack. <laughs> you really want to get that, he's even got another attack. Of course he missed. See, they're occupied by that little magmite up there. Gives me a little better shot. That's not all he can do is attack. Boom! Uh, so he's got a thing on his axe, uh, one of his axe feats. If he kills something, then everybody that sees that panics. But unfortunately, these are undead. They don't panic that easily. Uh, she's got a maneuver. Let's see about an aura. Holy light. And there's, I know there's some kind of aura here. Maybe it's searing light. Yeah, this does sublime damage. This will hit everybody in that area. So that's a good AoE for Cleric. Okay, let's see. This guy's looks like a good candidate. Now if I put Rapid Shot, I get two attacks, but he's also got a thing. If I'm pretty sure I can kill something, I could mark it, and then if I kill it, uh, everybody gets uh, some free healing. I think there might be another perk to that. Yeah, he does incredible damage with that. Okay. Now you notice she doesn't have a whole lot of hit points, or a whole lot of mana points. But let's see, if she could move there, but then she'd have to dis... Uh, uh, disengage and lose your turn. So let's see. The lightning is not quite what you'd think. It doesn't go in a line. I do have some stuff that goes in a line, though. It's just not a very long line. This one's got a neat. Stuns every all opponents in the line target area. I don't know if this guy's a stun or not. Yeah, so much of this stuff is not going to work because they're undead. Uh, I'll tell you what. I think. Hmm. I'm pretty sure all these. Oh, this, this is a, just opponents. Okay, let's try that. It's only going to hit. I can't tell. It looks like it might hit three of them. I've never used that before. <laughs> Yeah, some of the spells target just the opponents, and some do uh, will hit you as well. You get friendly fire, so just be wary of that. Okay, I'm not going to waste an arrow since I can use my dagger there. And just let's do attack. Oh, this my guy is stunned for some reason. And you can see this. Oh, this is my. Uh, Yeah, there's 
no way that I can easily see which one's the most damaged. I don't think I've got enough. Okay. Now, if I could move her somewhere where she could get a line, <laughs> it'd be kind of foolish to move her here. <laughs> but what the hell. I want to use some of these cone weapons. Let's see, that causes blindness. They're probably immune to blindness. Yeah, of course they are. Steel breath. I'm trying to remember if I've got anything that, uh... that does extra damage to undead. That's just cool looking. Oh, my cleric's not doing too well, though. Alright. You know, it might be worth hiding her. Let me try that. This one should get a backstab. Okay. <clears throat> uh, turns? Yeah, she's pretty dinged up, so I'm gonna put a regeneration on her, I think. It's a little bit hard to see the, the spells. I guess you played long enough to have this memorized. I have a greater rest of the At least you'll heal up a little bit every turn. Oh, it's too bad that this is uh, on cooldown. Okay. Man, got a nice little clutch of enemies. I think that's the right way to go there. I think I... Yeah. You know, I think I'll just summon another Magmite and put it right there. You know, clever enough, you could summon something right behind it so you can get that uh, backstab going without having to have a character there. Oh, my cleric's just about out of it. Jeez. Okay, she'll definitely get a backstab. Oh, they're immune to backstab. Oh, stymied it at every turn. Okay, he's got this uh, attack maneuver, but let's get him into position first. Got the frenzy on everybody. We get some attacks. Is critical. Oh, they're immune to critical strikes. So do the wild swing. Come on, do the wild swing. Wild swing. Okay. Anybody else about dead? Possibly. We could try to mark the target. Boom! So you see how everybody got healed because I marked that target. Getting tough to see what's going on. No, she doesn't have any. I'll have to take a potion. To get some spell points. You can take two potions if you don't move. Okay. I'm not loving where she's at. Kind of need to split up this damage somehow. I guess they must be stunned for some reason. Oh! Damn, I wish it was an undo. There really needs to be an undo. Summon a giant insect. Push cascade, good. I got nothing better to do, I guess use mine. I gave her a bow. I don't know what the hell they've done to her. Stunned. Must be a hell of a stun. Man, die! 
finally he gets to move. Well, so they can't attack diagonally. I don't know if I mentioned that yet. <laughs> no diagonals. Let's see, if I'd have done that better, he could have got his charge bonus. I wonder what's doing this damn stun. That is a pain. It's a pretty tough fight here, I gotta say. Fire Warrior Mark Nation Flaming Fists. I think they have to be adjacent for that to work. Yeah, I could do a stone skin on somebody. I'm gonna try to stone skin my uh, cleric there. Oh. oh, these guys are tough. Yeah, this is not the place you want to be doing random encounters. That is obvious. Can't hide in combat. Um, I guess you can't hide in combat if you're in melee. Frenzy in there. Finally killed one. Okay, can we get? Guess I have to go down here. <clears throat> get attack of opportunity, and that's not a thing in this game, as far as I can tell. What about this little dog? He's immune to Cody. Cold, but he's vulnerable to fire damage. At least I can crit him. Boom. So yeah, he's got an injured leg. So he'll be easier to hit. Right, finally she gets to move. Let's try our searing light. Yeah. There's a lot of nice damage there. Glad I put a regeneration on her. Wow. She's trying to kill that guy, but it's just got a lot of health. Sometimes I find it better to move with the arrow keys than with the mouse. But you really have to be careful not to screw it up. She's stunned again. I guess these zombie dudes have a stun. What are these things? Frost Shambler. Radiate Fear. Oh, they're fearing me. Yeah, I got a, a spell for that. I got an app for that. A little late now, but I could put on a... Pretty sure I got an aura. At least an aura or two. It would prevent them from fearing me. Oh, I should never have moved that ranger up there. That was boneheaded. Okay. Got a phalanx. Oh, she's about dead. Everybody's stunned. And she missed. <laughs> Good thing I summoned that Magmite, or that, uh, what is this, Vermin? Hmm, I wonder if I could reach him. Boom. Wild swing. Man, they've had my poor cleric and ranger stunned this whole time. Who's she in melee with? Oh, she's in melee? That ain't good. Okay. You know, it really stinks that these guys are being backstabbed. You notice a lot of the tougher mobs, though, that's how they make them tougher, right? You can't crit them, you can't backstab them really limits what you can do. Almost as if by design. Okay, probably should just get her the hell out of there, but maybe she likes to stab every once in a while. 
should be able to backstab that guy. Okay. One. Damned. Frost shamblers. Get out of there. You know, for some reason he can disengage. I think I put a gave him a feat that lets him disengage out of melee without losing his turn. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> so, whoops. Right, gotta give her some more arrows. Got some fire arrows. Damn, that's just a random encounter. <laughs> you know, obviously when you get to this point of the game, I'm pretty much near the end, so they want to make it super tough. And you notice I can't camp here, so i got to go all the way back, rest up, uh, come back. And I'm leveled out XP-wise, so it wouldn't make a lot of sense to be seeking out uh, combats like that. Really what I should have done is try to parlay or flee or one of those other options. Uh, so there's a lot to like about this game. Uh, one of the things you might, may or may not like is that, at least as far as I can tell, there's no way to undo uh, once you level up uh, these feats. You know, short of a reloading to an earlier save, you can't go back. It'd be nice if there was some place where you could uh, reset all your talents. You know, maybe that's just a design decision. Wanted your choices to matter, <laughs> as they say. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of uh, fun... I was hoping I could get description. Oh, there we go. Uh, but there's lots of ways to customize the character. There's not like a hundred options here. Uh, but, uh, for example, you could make this... Uh, my officer here could have been focused on an axe instead of a sword and shield. Or I guess you'd probably want the shield anyway. Uh, I did make a mistake here, for example. I shouldn't have gone all in on arms mastery. Because really, ranged accuracy and precise strike aren't all that great. Unless you want to switch back and forth, I suppose, from melee and ranged. Which, that might be a viable strategy. But if I could go back, I would get rid of these and just have the three in melee. Yeah, he's got multi-attack. So remember this. <laughs> Try to get the multi-attack as soon as you can, because that made a huge difference. Yeah, see, I could have put those... Uh, three points. Actually, it only takes one point to get the melee accuracy. So I could have had five points to put in other stuff, like anything else. <laughs> like Bloodthirsty would have been great. So, you know, you can look at it this way too. It's good replay value. And once you play it through once, you got a better sense of what works, what doesn't work, what's more fun. Like you could have, I could have made my cleric more of a, a melee character. Instead of going all in with spells. And you know, if you were familiar with the spells, you might say, well, I don't really, there's not too much in spirit that I like to cast. You know, but you again don't know that going into it. She can't get the highest level ones anyway. Oops. Let's go back to There's my ranger. I'm gonna see if I can find the one that lets him. Continue moving. Yeah, rapid shot, rapid reload. I think the if you score a critical hit with the bow, you immediately regain one attack. So a good strategy, I think, with him is to buff up the crit, so he gets two attacks. And many, many times he gets those two attacks. Or you could make him a melee character. Just depends on how you want to play it. Where is the vicious, vicious? Those both give you. Uh... Yeah, here it is, evasive. So that's a really good ability for any range class to have, I think. I think this would be really good on her. I, I did get it late in the game, I believe. Where is it? Fan. Yeah, there it is. Evasive. And I didn't quite have enough to get the mobility expert. Again, live and learn, right? Uh, but I think it'd be really effective to have fancy footwork so she can uh, swap out with somebody. So you could do your backstab, 
and then swap out with somebody else without losing your turn. At least if I read that right. Yeah, so lots of cool things to play with here. Yeah, I just, you know, at first I thought I wouldn't like this leveling or these uh, feet trees, but they really grew on me quick. Yeah, see, here's a Crease Max Cascade. Let's see if I can get an explanation of what that is. The maximum number of spells a spellcaster can cast in a single turn due to cascade effects. Each spell has a cascade difficulty. When casting a spell, the caster tests their spell aptitude test against the cascade difficulty. If they succeed, they get to take another action. Yeah, so many times with her in particular, I've been able to cast three, four magic missiles, let's say. I guess we could take a look here at the... Uh... Oh, I guess she doesn't have a... Where's magic missile? Yeah, so magic missile has... And what's her magic? Her magical aptitude is 10. So I guess if I had that... I don't know. If I could increase the max cascade, I'd get even another magic missile cast every turn. So this makes a lot of sense. You know, your weaker spells will have a low cascade. So you'd really likely be able to cast another spell right after that. Whereas a really devastating spell, you probably don't want to, <laughs> uh, the player to be able to cast unlimited... Unlimited uh, of those, right? Okay. Yeah, look at all these abilities. I mean, I'm running out of the <laughs> running out of room in the box. <laughs> well, I don't know what else I can really say about this game. I I really liked it. Uh, the graphics, the artwork is, is superb. The music is really good. Uh, I never felt bored, you know, getting into a battle. You know, maybe right towards the end in, in this final phase here. You know, I was just like, let me get to the end. I don't want to have to fight a bunch of random encounters on the way and have to go back, rest up, come back. <laughs> so, uh, but thankfully, I was just able to parlay and flee and uh, uh, stealth away until I got to the final final zone. Uh, the story is really, really good. And I'm not a guy that talks a lot about stories in games like this. Uh, I usually just find them kind of distracting. I'm always thinking, well, I'd rather just have a novel to read uh, and read that and then come back to the game because I want to play. I don't want to read. <laughs> playing a game. I like to read on my Kindle, thank you. Uh, but this game, uh, they really uh, do a good job of keeping the story interesting, but not just, you know, outstaying the welcome, overdoing it. It's just that you get little pieces here, you're, you're in battle, you're doing something interesting, here's a little bit more of the story. Uh, it all connects well. Uh, you, know, you never feel like you're just reading something superfluous or that it's not going to help you in some way. Uh, there's some pretty clever puzzles in the game. I should mention that too. Now, about the only criticism I come up with for this, really, is just, again, the uh, some of the language. Uh, I think he kind of overdid it, frankly, you know, with the some of the language, especially the F-bombs and the C-words. I'm not sure if there's anything worse than that, if there, if there is. You know, I think there should just be an option here, you know, settings uh, somewhere here, turn off turn off profanity or adjust to PG, <laughs> PG-13, whatever. Uh, but I might be alone in that. You know, I brought it up on Discord. Nobody seemed, to, nobody else seemed to have an issue. But I'm just thinking, if I wanted to send this game to a, a kid to play you know, as a gift, little uh, a nephew or something, you know, I would have to hesitate on that just just because of the language. You know, I think the kid could uh, uh, figure out how to play the rest of it. <clears throat> so that's a criticism. Uh, I have seen people criticize it because of the lack of an auto map. I, I don't know really how I feel about it. Uh, it can get a little bit confusing sometimes when they're in the midst of a cave or a dungeon. But I, I kind of like that. <laughs> I mean, it should, it should kind of feel uh, confusing and disorienting sometimes. I mean, it's not to the point where it's hopeless. Uh, you know, if you explore around enough, you'll, you'll remember how to get back. It doesn't punish you excessively like... Uh, you know, the worst kind of game to me is one where you get lost in a dungeon or a cave and you're just getting bombarded with random encounters and random encounters. Uh, you know, if they don't kill you, it just gets tedious, you know, and you, the frustration builds because you're already upset about not knowing, how do I get back? And then, oh, I got another battle. <laughs> so uh, there's nothing like that here. Uh, most of the battles uh, outside of that world, world map, I believe, are all preset 
encounters, so you don't have to worry about just getting endlessly bombarded with that. And with that. So that really makes it a lot less frustrating uh, if you do get lost. And again, we're not talking about huge, sprawling maps, you know. You could probably figure your way around pretty easily, even on the, the toughest one. And so that, I don't have any complaints about that. Uh, it is a convenience I'm kind of used to, but you, know, you get over it. Uh, uh, really, let me show you the... Uh, oh, I, I wish I could show you the ship. <laughs> I don't think I have it set up on here. And I'll probably never be able to get back. I could try. Yeah, mate. <laughs> I'll probably never be able to reach it in order to show it to you. God, where the, where the hell did I park? <laughs> yeah, we could try to sneak away. Let's see. Can she sneak away? She needs a roll of 12. Ah, I'm not going to do it. Uh, anyway, kind of Ultima-wise again. Uh, there's several games that have that uh, uh, the ship. But it's really cool. Kind of got your little home base, and you can rest in it and make your uh, you cook recipes. And even there's a vendor on the ship. You can float around. I really like that because it made the game feel fresh again because now I could explore all these areas I couldn't get to before. You know, so that was awesome. So anyway, I think it's a kick-ass game. Definitely think you should get this. I showed you where you can buy it on GOG or Steam. It, uh, you actually, before you go, I will see if I can find out how many hours it took me to complete this game. Of course, you got to add today. So I played, for, I played total for 26 hours. You want to see my Steam page? Uh, can we do it? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Yay. Don't cover me up, though. Uh, yeah, so it looks like I got 14 out of 15 achievements. That's kind of interesting. It's like I'm missing one. Uh, anyway. Uh, so what are we even playing here? About two hours, maybe three hours today? Uh, so about... Let's just say 24 hours, you could get all the way through this. Of course, I didn't rush it. You know, I'm the kind of guy that likes to explore uh, every nook and cranny. Would I recommend this game to other players? Yes, I would. Oh, looks like I have to write a review. <laughs> i do that. I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> I'll do it after I'm done here. Uh, but anyway, again, really great game. If you, if you like those gold box games from back in the day, but you want something with a little bit better... Uh, interface is like they call the quality of life. I think you'll like this game. If you're really into Cthulhu and H.P. Lovecraft, I think you'd like this game. Uh, if you like the, even like the early Ultima games, you know, there's a lot of similarities here. Uh, so that's basically what this, these guys grew up playing. <laughs> Tried to model the game after that. But, you know, I saw a lot of influences from some of my other uh, favorite games too. A little bit of a might and magic uh, flavor to this as well. So really, I just think this is a spectacular effort. You know, it's when you're a small team, an indie studio, you don't want to try to make the next Dragon Age. Uh, you want to try to think, of, you know, what can I, what can I reasonably expect to do and do it well and, and do a good, thorough job on it? And I think they, they've nailed it. I wouldn't want to see this game take 100 hours if that just meant a bunch of filler and, and random encounters and you know, just uh, big empty areas, you know, that'd be dumb. <laughs> I like these concentrated little zones. You can explore, uh, see everything, explore every nook and cranny and without it taking, you know, years of real time. Uh, so anyway, uh, I had a blast with this game. I hope you'll check out, check it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, but I'm going to stop it here and I'll see you next time. for this week's episode you know i don't know this one came out a bit early you know i usually like to let a maybe a week or even sometimes two weeks go between episodes but i really wanted to get this out because uh, the game is fresh <laughs> and i think it might help uh, owl out more if there's kind of a surge of uh, videos and reviews coming out uh, fairly sequentially uh, so we'll see if that if that helps uh, anyway, I want to thank you very, very, very much for supporting this show. Uh, we've really been struggling, man. I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but <laughs> we just, uh, I could really use your help, uh, Matt Bradley, Shuri, and I. 
uh, right now. You know, I don't know what's what's going on out there, but if you're in a position, if you're comfortable and you've got some money and you like Matt Chat, uh, please go to that link in the show notes. Don't don't hesitate. You know, you really need you to step up to the plate uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon page. Uh, you can contribute your buck, one dollar, one doubloon, <laughs> one guitar pick, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, uh, per month. You know, it's pretty reasonable uh, what we're asking for here, but it really makes a big difference. And whatever it is you're able to do to support the show, especially right now, we really, truly appreciate it. Uh, also, don't forget uh, liking uh, the videos, commenting on them, uh, sharing them, posting them to forums and whatnot. Might not seem like a big deal to you, uh, but believe me, that makes a huge difference in getting uh, uh, the word out about Matchup. Uh, so whether you're able, if you're not in a position, or if you're in a position, whatever it is you do <laughs> to support the show, even if it is just watching it, uh, I appreciate it, and thank you very, very much. Well, what about that news from the Matt Cave? Oh, well, I remember a movie, uh, and I got it on DVD here somewhere, called Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> uh, kind of a creepy uh, uh, old movie, kind of funny, kind of campy. I kind of put it in the same category as Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, which is another one of my favorites. I, I just kind of like this wacky stuff. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I, I didn't see this coming. Uh, they're making a, or they've already made a game uh, based on that old movie. Uh, plan your alien invasion and harvest humans as the iconic killer clowns. Or gather a team of survivors to fight the extraterrestrial threat in a game based on the old 80s cult classic movie. Welcome to a new crazy take on the asymmetrical multiplayer horror experience. Now, apparently this works better as a party game uh, than trying to play it solo. At least that's what the reviews seem to indicate. Uh, you pick it up, though, $39.99 on Steam. Uh, next up, Miko. Uh, he's really excited about this fan-made Fallout 2 uh, remake. It's a first-person uh, remake. Now they've got over 100 developers working on this. <laughs> so, is that how it works? You add more developers and that speeds up and makes it better? Uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, anyway, they're targeting a Steam release uh, while making fast progress. And, of course, this is Project Arroyo. And Arroyo, it's probably got <laughs> rolled R's. <laughs> I could never do that. Project Arro, uh, to recreate and reimagine Fallout 2 and the creation engine of Fallout 4. Uh, so anyway, super duper cool project. Keep tabs on that. Uh, and then he also wrote in about capes. Now, you know, I'm, I don't know if I've... <laughs> I feel like I've been saying this forever. I'm going to cover Freedom Force. It's one of my favorite old uh, uh, computer role-playing games, superhero theme. Uh, well, this uh, game, Capes... Seems like it'd be kind of a modern take on that. Games like City of Heroes. Uh, superheroes clash in this turn-based strategy game. Recruit, train, deploy your team. Uh, take back the city from villains. Uh, you build a team of heroes. Uh, play the, across a series of campaigns and patrol missions. You push forward with a story or take time to explore the side missions. Unlike more heroes, etc. Uh, so it looks good. It sounds good. But the reviews have been rather harsh. And what they're complaining about this is one of those games, now this is according to them, I haven't played it myself, uh, but what I've been reading about it is that there's basically one way to get through each mission, and you know, whatever that one way is, if you don't do it that way, you lose, uh, so it doesn't give you a very good, you know, flexibility, and you know, sort of making your own <laughs> strategies is kind of uh, their way or the highway, is what it sounds like in, the re in these uh, reviews. Now, I don't know if that's true, I'm not speaking from personal experience, uh, so if you check this game out, you have a different take, please you know, chime in, love to hear uh, your thoughts on it. If you agree with those criticisms, or maybe you have a very different perspective, love to hear it. Because otherwise, you know, this looks like a really good game. I was really excited to play it. And then I started reading these reviews, and, and who knows? Uh, okay. Let's see about that ale of the week. Well, I've been talking about this forever, so what happened is... You know, I went with a friend of mine to a comic book convention, and on the way back we went to this little uh, little hamburger pub, <laughs> burger pub, uh, and they had this uh, uh, these non-alcoholic beers available, and they had uh, it was called S'mores Dark Brew from Untitled Art. 
So I didn't quite know. I don't usually go for flavored beers. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Uh, but I tried it in the restaurant, and man, it's just so good. And I, I had to find out, can I order these online somewhere? Can I buy them from around here, whatever? You know, it turns out it's fairly easy. You can go right to Untitled Arts uh, website, order these. Now, I assume it's probably easier since it's non-alcoholic. They don't have to deal with uh, issues around that, maybe. Uh, but it wasn't too expensive. Uh, you do have to buy a big quantity, <laughs> so, and you might want to see if you could try some individual ones first. But anyway, let's go ahead and get it open, and I will share the experience with you. Let's see, these guys are out of uh, Wanakee, Wisconsin, brewed and canned for Untitled Art. You know, I, I have been drinking these out of the can because it is, it's an artistically done can. You know, although I think there's, I used to like drinking out of a glass better just because you get more... Uh, more of an aroma. You know, there is something, there's nothing wrong with drinking out of the can. <clears throat> anyway, really nice dark color on that. Wow, none more dark, none more black. <laughs> really dark, kind of golden color around the edges. Really lovely head on that. Oh man, I wish I could let you smell that. <laughs> it's phenomenal. I just, this has got to be one of my most favorite smells. It's very chocolatey. <clears throat> What's that other aroma in there? I guess you'd call it kind of nutty. It really does smell like a s'more. I like that when you get those marshmallows, nice and roasty, toasty, you know, a little bit of black. <laughs> some cinnamon, some graham crackers. I mean, it's all there in the aroma. Just fantastic aroma. Let me get some of the drinking horn here. You know, I kind of already said this is like one of my new favorites, so you're probably not going to be too surprised by my taste test here, but <laughs> I just, I'm really happy. This is the first time I've tried a non-alcoholic uh, brew, and where I can honestly say not only is it as good as, you know, a regular beer, I think there's a lot of people that would prefer this. <laughs> uh, alcohol aside, just going by, you know, taste alone, but let's see if it uh, lives up to the, uh, to the hype here. I mean, this is just, it's really magnificent. It's got that sort of smoky uh, flavor of those uh, s'mores again. You know, it really is like uh, uh, s'mores <laughs> in, in a beverage form. Uh, and I don't know if that sounds good. To me, there's kind of a coffee taste to this as well. Maybe just a little bit of a kind of a dark chocolate uh, flavor to it. You know, and again, if I didn't know better, I would think this was just a regular, I, I would assume there was some alcohol in this. Got a little bit of bite, a little bit of kick. Try it again here. I mean, it's just fantastic. Uh, real smooth. Uh, it's got a nice uh, uh, creamy uh, quality to it. Uh, again, very much like a, a really excellent stout. Uh, I, I think I like this better than, than a Guinness. <laughs> I really like Guinness. <laughs> uh, so that's saying something. Yeah, it's just all around really good. I, again, I think it's one of these rare ones uh, where people might actually prefer this uh, to a regular beer. Uh, so they've really knocked it out the park. Uh, I do have a variety pack uh, with some of their other flavors. I got a, I think they got a Pilsner. Uh, I want to say they have an IPA or maybe an American Golden, they call it. A couple of varieties, so I'll be trying those those next. But, you know, I'm just really happy about this S'mores Dark Brew. <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, if you're somebody, if you're trying to kick alcohol, like a lot of people are doing, uh, but you don't want to compromise on taste, and you don't want to feel a sense of disappointment every time you go for some kind of watery tasting, uh, non-alcoholic, man, do yourself a favor. Go, get this Untitled Art uh, S'mores Dark Brew. I guarantee <laughs> uh, you're not going to feel any regret or dissatisfaction with that. You're, you're going to probably prefer it to the real thing. Uh, all right, let's wrap it up with a quote. And I was looking for quotes uh, from Old Norse. There's quite a bit of uh, fantastic Old Norse uh, mythology and literature out there. As you probably know, if you've ever, you know, read a book, even a comic book. <laughs> uh, but anyway, here's a good one. It goes something like this. An unwise man thinks he knows all. So 
ponder on that, and I'll see you guys next time. that any of the stories I have written will be adapted for the movie in my lifetime. Perhaps one day when the world is very different in the distant future.